You're listening to the New Artist Workshop. Would you say that to him? Please. Yes. I wish I could do it myself, but... The men tell no tales. I'm Peter Rancuso. And I'm Viviana Metzger. And this is the show where Peter, who's the best boyfriend in the world, and I pick a film franchise and go through every single installment. The good, the bad, and the ugly. (laughs) Wow. And to be clear, we are defining a franchise as a series of films with at least four entries. Until the next season. (laughs) So, Viviana, what are we talking about today? Today we are talking about <laughs> the train. So uh, you, you, we're switching back. Anyways, we're switching. just yo. What are we talking you about? Guys. Yeah, I'm actually Peter. <laughs> In case you didn't know, they know. <laughs> Today we are talking about the 2017 film Pirates of the Caribbean: colon, Dead Men Tell No Tales. And this, of course, is your one and only spoiler warning. If you haven't watched the movie, go do that before listening to this episode and come back. Okay, Viviana, why don't you read the letterbox blurb for us? Uh, This is a very hefty one. Oh, you wouldn't trust me. Okay. I I had you do it last time. (laughs) All right. Here we go. Thrust into an all-new adventure, a down-on-his-luck Captain Jack Sparrow feels the winds of ill fortune blowing even more strongly than deadly ghost sailors led by his old nemesis, the evil Captain Salazar. Escape. Oh, escape from the devil's triangle. That was a very long sentence. That was all one sentence, yeah. (laughs) Jack's only hope of survival lies in seeking out the legendary trident of Poseidon, but to find it, he must forge an uneasy alliance with a brilliant and beautiful astronomer and a headstrong man in the British Navy. Technically, he was was defrocked from the British Navy. His very first scene, he gets kicked out of the Navy. What? Was he part of the navy? Or then the remember he remember he there? gets the, no he was he was on the crew and then he got his oh arm. that's why it's treason yeah oh, he oh, got yeah. he got his coat ripped his arm his <laughs> sleeves didn't, ripped he looked very navy so I was just, well he had the he had the jacket on because they ripped the sleeves I just figure all British people wear petticoats like that no <laughs> no. <laughs> no okay so here's some basic info so once again we have another new director this time we have a directing duo. Uh, Joachim Roning and Espen Sandberg. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is the first Pirates of the Caribbean film not to have been written by... Uh, Ted and Terry! Ted and Terry. No! Um, this, was, this film was written by Jeff Nathanson, who I, I don't know if he wrote or co-wrote. I think he wrote Rush Hour 2 and 3. Okay. okay. And then Catch Me If You Can. Wait, now that you say that he wrote those, I can see it. <laughs> I think I know why, but tell me why. I can see it so much because it's so. There's so many in your windows. Lots there's of sexual so, humor. Yeah, there's so much sexual humor, and like I feel like that is mm-hmm. um what's it called? Flandering. Flanderization. Flanderization. I feel like Chris Tucker's character has this flanderization of where he just like turns into like this like girl crazy guy like he, it's it, you just he, become like the most exaggerated no, version no of, yeah, yeah. He, i mean he always was like a, a smooth talker and a ladies man but then i feel like as it progressed like mm-hmm. well you'll have to bend your rules a little bit but if we can watch the rush hour franchise no no okay, rule bending okay okay but the the batman we gotta talk about batman okay we're gonna ma'am this is gonna be a whole they thing don't, that's a spoiler what's batman no, I'm just saying, once we get to Batman, once we get to any any superhero, yeah, there's going to be some rule bending. No, there's not. Okay. Anyways, I see similar writing styles. That is all I have to say. Okay. Just, just for clarification, because you brought this up. So, if, some, if there's like a limited series, that counts. That's okay. We're talking about like six seasons of a show. Same. 
it, it's on Letterboxd. Okay. If but, it's on, that's my rule. If it's okay, on Letterboxd, okay, it counts. Why can't we do three? Because now it's like not a franchise. That's just I a trilogy. Call, yeah, but it's a, a, a franchised trilogy. Especially if a, if a trilogy and that's all so, there is. Okay, if they never made the newer uh, Lord of the Rings and it was just those three movies, you'd say that's not a franchise. That's a fucking franchise. Okay. Well, actually, they There's had made so movies before that. Merch. They made three. They made animated films in the seventies and eighties. So. Okay, but you were canceled. Maybe. Anyways, okay. Maybe. Whatever. You, why, why are you bringing this up on the mic? On, the mic is hot. We could have had this conversation <laughs> because, before. Because we could do the Rush Hour trilogy. That's why. But there's plenty of, I guess like if we if we really need, we're, we're, we're in want of franchises, but there's plenty that meet the requirements. No, I know. I so know. we don't need we'll, to go to Rush we'll, Hour. We'll ask the people. No, no, this is not a democracy. Yes, it is. This is an aut- this is an autocracy, no, an oligarchy. No, no. Well, at least it's a duology. A dual. <sighs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> don't reign by yourself. Uh, no, I mean the two of them. We could the, no. The people. I don't care what the people think. Sorry. You. Hey, you listening? I don't care what you think. Anyway. Yes, yes he does. <laughs> I, I care desperately. Okay. No. Okay. Just to make this clear, if it's on Letterboxd, it counts. It needs to have four letterbox entries. Okay, whatever. The distribution company was Walt Disney Studios Motion Pictures. Uh, re- <laughs> Why'd you say it like that? <laughs> oh, uh, I don't know. Uh, the release month and year, May 2017. So obviously a pre-summer, late school blockbuster hoping. This is like the beginning of the blockbuster season, yeah. Yes. Hoping. See, the summer season. I... I open uh the budget was 275 million dollars with a box office gross of 795 million and that's all i have (laughs) (laughs) okay viviana you had never seen this before you've seen the other four we think but this one you had never seen no i have never because you were just about to graduate high school when this came out right uh may of 2017 yes I think I might. Yeah, I think I might have already. Um, yeah, no, I had never seen this before. Mm-hmm. Did you? Were you aware of it when it came out? Did you know? Like, did you know it existed until we did th- did Honestly, this? Like, I don't know. I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Uh, was it? I mean, maybe I might have heard of it. Uh, but just not the vibes, you know. Just like not what I was concerned. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was it's kind of a a transitional period in my life okay graduating high school and going to college and whatnot so mm-hmm. um it didn't really take the time to go see pirates of the caribbean <laughs> but i think it speaks to the franchise because an earlier film you would have yeah is the thing like, i didn't see it either this is my first time watching this no yeah I, I think if my friends wanted to go then i would definitely have gone but i don't remember us so, mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know if this was even on our radar. <laughs> yeah, my my only experience with this movie was like seeing the trailers because this was, mm-hmm. I was like a sophomore in college, so like yeah. in films, so in film school, so we were going to movies all the time. Yeah, yeah, like every other week we were going to see something. Yeah, uh, and this trailer we would make fun of all the time. <laughs> Is it, the- it was just a goofy. Well, it was just the movie. Well, mainly because it, it, the centerpiece of the trailer is Javier Bardem as this character. Okay. And his like really goofy. And the trailer ends with him being like, like the part when he's like, would you tell him for me? Please. <laughs> so we would just make fun of like, we would just make fun of it, frankly. And I remember it came out and heard it wasn't good. And I was like, I mean, yeah, I could have told you that. I didn't need to see it to tell you it wasn't going to be good. Yeah. And then didn't think about it until doing this podcast and was like well shit if we're gonna watch we gotta watch all of them then so he's really good it's the same year that mother came out too oh really that that came out in the fall but yeah i i am i i am i but we love javier bardem but i think sometimes his performance could be hit or miss and and we'll talk about this i mean it's it's been pretty good like in no country for old men and I don't know. He's just a scary dude. <laughs> he is kind of. He's, he has like a. He has a good presence. Yeah. I think. I think uh, you can draw a parallel between this character and more specifically his performance. You can compare that to Davy Jones, in that like okay. they're very similar in that they're both meant to be really scary, but they're kind of goofy. 
But where Davy Jones works, like, I think they're able to thread the needle on that a little bit better, where it's, Mm -hmm. like, it's goofy, but the goofiness almost makes me like the character more. Mm -hmm. Whereas this, it's just, like, a complete misfire. It's just, like, it's to the point of... coming out of his mouth? Is that blood? Is that tar? It's, like, black. Is, Is that goop? I don't... Yeah, I don't Why know Why does he is. have goop coming out of his mouth? Because <laughs> he's supposed to be like an undead kind of ghost. I know, but he was burned. Where would the goop come from? I, I don't know. This, I don't... This is this wasn't my pressing concern watching the Jeff, movie. what's up with the goop? The goop. <laughs> um, so, but I think, I think it's just like very goofy. Like it really... This movie feels like it's the last movie. Wait, really? It feels like it's... Wait, I what? thought he was... <laughs> I thought it was very dumb, a lot of his stuff. Really? Yeah. I think it's scary. <laughs> well, we also went to go see Anastasia recently. And oh you my were god, like, okay, that's And you unironically terrible. and you were unironically like, why is this movie so scary? Because it I is was, it's, it's it's terrifying. I are you kidding me? I was scared <laughs> of Rasputin so much. You but- were, but now you're an adult. Are you still scared? Well, no, I'm not scared, but it, it. I just remember being scared and how, like, like mm-hmm. yeah, this, like, looks scary. Okay, like, but you tell me when that scene, which is the cover art for this podcast episode. <laughs> so everyone listening, look down at your phone, I your laptop. No, I'm telling them. I know. I haven't seen it. I'm about to reference the... Okay. Just let me finish! So, Stop shouting. So so look down at the photo. You're telling me that when they're... When, when, when he and his crew are running on the water towards them in the broad daylight. Okay, that's and they're like, the one time where he makes a funny face. <laughs> like, but the whole movie feels like that. It just feels no, like... the movie is extremely silly, but... <laughs> well, I was going to say, this is the movie... That... I think I think he's a... I don't know. He, he's, a, he's a good actor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll get into it. Um, but I feel like this feels like the last movie in that it feels like... It re- the franchise had really run out of steam. This yeah. was really on fumes. Like, like for context, this was the largest gap between any of the movies. So time wise, you no. Know, in terms of the yeah, in terms of the release, not oh, within yeah. the story. In terms, I mean, in terms of like release. So the first movie came out in two thousand three, and then three years later, the second one came out, and then only a year later, the third one came out because they filmed them both at the same time, yeah. and then the fourth one came out four years later. This comes out six years after that. So mm-hmm. this is the longest gap mm-hmm. that the franchise has seen. And a lot of this, ha- if you think in the context of big budget blockbusters, yeah, like oh, even it, even in 2011, completely changed. Even, even by 2011, the industry had changed. But between 2011 and 2017, it, it, the industry had changed so much, even yeah. just that in that time span. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, gone were the days of like, when the first movie came out, when, you know, mm-hmm. um, it was kind of like the beginning of a new era, like the IP era, which I would really date to like the early 2000s. And and by all accounts, the parts of the care IP. intellectual property. Oh, the idea oh, that basically yeah. every franchise at blo- Blockbuster, because before Blockbusters would just mean like a big, expensive spectacle. Yeah, yeah. But they weren't always associated with anything. So like E.T. was a blockbuster. No, was yeah, a, yeah. But this is the era when you start to see like blockbusters are almost exclusively based on something else. It has uh, to have some kind uh, of connection. Yeah, like Marvel. And the first film is certainly of that ilk because it's, you know, it's based off of the ride. Like that's yeah, where it's, yeah. but it, like we had talked about before, that it really had its own identity. Yeah. It really, it really, that, that was a very short that's only it's only like a fifteen minute ride, right? So mm-hmm. they really extrapolate and built things from the ground up. No, oh, yeah. But by this point, good job, Ted and Terry. It it really feels like this movie is being made solely because it's an IP people recognize. Yeah. That I don't feel even with the flaws of the other ones, like I never felt like like even the last one. Just so disappointing. Like this one is the laziest. It feels the laziest. It feels like everyone involved, yeah, is just kind of doing the bare minimum. Like you know, it's like I don't know. Maybe maybe there's there's got to be a different way or or something or someone has probably done it, but just people are just hitting or or, or shooting and missing because like I feel like you would want to end it. You would want to end a series or a franchise with a big bang. You know. Well, I don't think wanna... this was meant to be the end of the franchise. 
That's the thing, is that... Okay, well, this... I don't know. I believe a sixth film was announced almost as soon as this one came out. Um, and we'll get into it, and I don't know if this is still happening, but there was... Well, we'll talk about we'll talk about this and why it's not going to happen, but I don't think Johnny Depp is going to return to the franchise. No. Mostly because of all the Amber Heard stuff. And, yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I had heard that they were going to do, like, a female-centered one with Margot Robbie. I think we had talked about it on the, on the show yes, before. Yes, but then it's, but it's... I think it's stalled. They I don't, stopped. Yeah. I, I don't know where that's at. I think it's, like, in development hell, kind of, so... Yeah, I, I read something. It was, like, they're not... She, if they do it, she's not involved anymore. That's what I saw. Yeah, but, yeah. That may have been something, like, because what, when was her big break? was Wolf of Wall Street, so that was like 2014, and then I, Tanya, which was probably around this time, actually. Mm-hmm. So that would make sense that that would be like a big headline. Like, Margot Robbie's gonna be in. But yeah. I feel like people still love Margot Robbie. I think she just turned in her best performance of her career in Babylon recently. <laughs> but but her star, I feel Why like has... Why do you like that movie? <laughs> it's it's amazing. It's, it's like one of the best movies. Movie. Terrible but Okay. I, we're not gonna get into this right now. It's a terrible movie. Everyone, you're listening to Mommy and Daddy fight. It's not, it's not terrible. It's amazing. Um, but anyway, my point being is that I think her star has kind of faded a little bit. I don't think she's, well, we'll see when this episode comes I out. So. I, when this episode comes out, let me see when this, so we're recording this near the end of February of, of 2023. I mean, not, this episode comes out in late June. Bad or, it's not well, that she's I'm, bad or anything, but just like, I think so overused, you know, like, like with, um, Suicide Squad and like it. Mm-hmm. Like, she didn't have the best choice in projects after her big break. Yeah. Um, but at this point, I, I I don't know when the new Barbie movie is oh, coming yes, out. Barbie. I think that will be coming out in July. The so this, same, if you're listening to this, exa- well, yes, yes, yes. Oh, so that's coming out in July. Yes. So, so July. Yeah. Um. So when you're listening to this, that will be coming out soon. So I don't know. Maybe that will be like a new kind of uh, second wind for her. But I think it's. Uh, I mean, this. Is, I don't know why we're on this topic. I, I've kind of gone off topic, but because <laughs> there's not much. I feel to like talk she. About with them. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, yeah. And it's also funny because um, as we're recording this, the most recent episode that we've released is, is our new Mutants episode. I think this is going to be a very similar episode where we're just kind of like, I don't know. What do you well, even say about it? Podcast. We can talk about what we want. It's true. You know what? And also, it, it's true. It, it, there's a through line, so. Yeah. No, I'm not saying so it's bad. I'm just saying. I just, ju- just let it happen. I so much, so much angst coming at me angst. This, at you're this episode. The one, you're the one who was shouting at me. But I, I'm Italian. Anyway. I can't help it. Okay, you can't use that as an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> Any case, okay. So let's talk a little bit about the development of the, of this movie. So shortly before the release of the last film on Stranger Tides, the cast and crew of the fourth film were told to set aside time in the near future because Walt Disney Pictures intended to shoot a fifth and sixth film back to back, kind of like uh, the second and third yes, film. Yes, yeah. However, it was later stated that only a fifth film was in the works, with Terry Rossio writing a script for a fifth film for a fifth film without his partner Ted Elliott. So Terry was originally Ted. involved. Ted. Terry was originally involved. What? He was going to write the script. He has a story by credit no, in this uh, yeah, film, but yeah. he doesn't. He's he, not the he writer. He had a three. It was like executive producer, story by, and then character. Yeah, by. I think executive executive producer is often a role that you just like throw to someone as like a courtesy usually. Okay, but he so. wasn't in the other ones, so. Huzzah for Terry. Huzzah for Terry. Okay. I don't know why you have such an affinity for these two dudes. I don't know. Guys. Anyway. It's just funny. So so Rob Marshall, he directed the last one. Right? He directed Chicago. Mm-hmm. Um, he was initially rumored to return to direct, but he declined after choosing instead to direct uh, Into the Woods, the the uh, film adaptation of wait, the Wait, this is Gore? No, this is Rob Marshall. Oh, Rob Marshall. I just said. Oh, <laughs> I just I, said. I was, stop reading <laughs> while I'm talking. I was looking up a picture. <laughs> stop. <laughs> Pay <laughs> attention. I just want to see what Ted and Terry look like. Anyways, oh my okay. god! Yes, this is Rob Marshall. Yes. Okay. He went on to direct Into the Woods, the film adaptation of the stage musical. Okay. Also with Johnny Depp. Also with Johnny Depp. Also yes. Disney. Also Disney. Yes. Um. After Marshall passed on the film, many directors were rumored to take over, including Gore Verbinski, who was responsible for the original three films. Uh, Verbinski ultimately passed on the project, feeling that, quote, there's no reason other than financial in making the film. <laughs> and boy, is he right. Um, See, Gore knew. Gore knew. It, I think that quote is more about, like, from his perspective in terms of, like, the only reason why I would direct would be financial. Like, I don't have anything that I'm really interested in in terms of directing the film. But also, yeah. you could say that about Disney, just in general. Like, this is only being made because it's because it's. Uh, no, yeah, I mean, because he was with it 
you know, in the beginning and, and for so long, like, you know, the three movies. So it's, yeah, you know, he's like, there's not really anything else to tell. <laughs> yeah. Uh, furthermore, uh, te- uh, Terry, Terry Rossio's script was ultimately rejected. And the writer stated that a major reason was the use of a female villain, which made actor Johnny Depp, quote, worried that it would be redundant to Dark Shadows, which also featured a female villain. Because he had just been in that movie. Uh, oh, actually, no, not just. Because that movie came out in 2012. 2012. But that's like a really dumb... Because you can only have so many movies where a woman's a villain. There's only so you go... We filled up with the quota this year, guys. Also, what... Are people keeping track of, like, the movies he's in specifically? Like... <laughs> I don't know. It's it's There's very like, dumb. Oh reasons. my gosh. This also has a female villain. You know what that makes me think of? Dark Shadows. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> like no, what? You would just <laughs> It's really silly. But um the, like he was working during this time. Into the Woods, Dark Shadows, uh Pirates of the Caribbean, Rango, uh or Ringo, like Rango? Rango. All of this shit. He's making so but much. But he had also been in the... Um, well, actually, hold on. He was also in a big Disney flop that I'll get to in just a second. <clears throat> but let me continue. And don't don't read on! Just listen to me. Oh, yes. In so. January 2013... <laughs> I'm just I'm steamrolling over you. In January 2013, Disney hired Jeff Nathanson to work on the script. Uh, Ronin and Sandberg, who would become the directors, said they were particularly moved by Nathans- Nathanson's funny and touching script. I don't think it's funny or touching. Um, no. And it convinced them to sign on to direct in May. Uh, Ronick believing believed the script was all, quote all there unquote, but needed oh. scenes to carry the tradition of Gore Verbinski, bringing the emotional core and big action set pieces. Uh, Jerry Bruckheimer said, "quote We have an outline everyone loves, but the script is not done." End quote. Explain that the release would be postponed beyond summer 2015. The studio questioned Depp's bankability following the financial losses of The Lone Ranger. Uh, which had come oh, out in 2013. Yes, Lone too. Uh, and the screenplay's first drafts were not approved by Walt Disney Studios chairman Alan Horn, who was concerned about the finished product. So, a little bit about the Lone Ranger. Um, huge flop for Disney. Disney had a lot of huge flops in this era. They also yeah. did, uh, what was it, John Carter? Um, oh, yeah. That movie with uh, Taylor Kitsch, I think, is his name, um, the guy from Friday Night Lights. Oh, um, yeah. huge, it was directed by the guy who directed mm-hmm. Finding Nemo. Um, and it was a huge bomb. Very expensive, like, sci-fi movie. Yeah. Based off of, uh, si- si- um, I think, like, serialized story. Written by the same guy who wrote Tarzan. Okay. Like, in, like, the early 1900s about, like, a civilization on Mars and this guy goes. and right. Yeah. So, John Carter was a huge flop. The Lone Ranger was also a huge flop. But also, like, were... I'm pretty sure Tiny Depp is playing a white guy He's a who's playing an Indian. American. Uh, playing a Native American. Yeah. Exactly. So... Um, so I think some people were kind of put off and by that, though. Yeah, it was I guess I heard not... from... I never... Did you see it? I never... I've never seen this. No, I thought it looked really stupid. <laughs> yeah. From from what I heard from people, the movie does kind of criticize that character for doing that. Like, there are characters in the movie that kind of, like, look down... Like, like but it's... I feel but like still, it's just not a good look to have Johnny Depp in red face, essentially. Yeah, I, I feel like we've kind of evolved past that, and, and it's, um... I don't know. It's so weird how, like, we'll be like, oh, like, that was 2003. We didn't know better. But, like, we probably did. We just... There's also 2013, too. No, I know. I'm just saying, like, I don't know. People, that's what we always say. We didn't know better. Like, we didn't know better. And I think they were slow to catch up. So, like, it was a movie they could have released probably, like, a couple years before, but not. When not they did, when they did. And definitely not after. Yeah. Um, though there is something to be said about, like, p- people are always like, oh, like, you can't judge a movie, like an older movie, by our modern standards and all these things. And and that's true to a point. Mm-hmm. But also, pe- the, the, the underlying assumption of that statement is that people didn't know any better. Mm-hmm. But, like, so, for example, I'm reading a great book um, about the horribly racist yet incredibly influential film Birth of a Nation, the 1915 film, Mm -hmm. which basically glorifies the Ku Klux Klan, riddled with black faces, three-hour Southern uh, myth. Researched it. What's that? Researched it. Yeah, researched the Ku Klux Klan, right? And it's this fascinating look. And people think like, oh, you can't judge a movie by modern standards, whatever. But at the time, people complained about it. 
It's not no, like yeah. it's yeah. people always think like, oh, everyone ha- was fine with it back then. It's only now like woke people are upset. No, it's usually like at the more time, more steam basically. Like Song of the South, like if you want to look at Disney, for example, that was in the forties. Yeah. People complain like the NAW, <laughs> the NAACP protest. People like were upset about it then. Yeah. It's, it's just, just like, that they didn't have a strong enough voice because we didn't give those those communities a voice. Yeah. I so guess people like, are like, oh, back in the day, we all used to agree about everything. Yeah, because it was only like no, middle class white people that were, I think you it, all agreed, but not everyone <laughs> else agreed. Well, that definitely plays a role into it because I guess now they're a part of it. But I think it's also like, oh, we didn't know better. It's like, like, it's more like a collective statement and not like... Like obviously people knew better, but not not in the general terms. Not enough and, to make And I think impact. like especially on the nuances. So like even with um, I'm not gonna get into it just because I still am learning. But like um, with newer terminology, like because it's mm. always shifting and stuff. Like someone may not always be trying to do something that like ill-willed but like it may come off that way because like mm-hmm. like it's it's <clears throat> older but like the nuanceness hasn't gotten around yeah. yet i feel like <clears throat> that is like what people mean when they yeah. say that like like in terms of uh like something that i love that I heard Bob the Drag Queen say is is differently abled. And I love that. That's so cool, you know? Um, as opposed to disabled? Yeah, as opposed to, like, disabled. But then, you or, know, or there, handica- yeah. there's, like, yeah, or handicap, and there's, like, the, the debate between, like, oh, is this a disabled person or a person with disabilities and all this stuff? So I feel like like all the nuances of things, are, or, or, like, even, even with something like, like transgender and transvestite like like people like the the organization created by Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia something I forgot um <laughs> it was like something transvestite so something something so it's but now like, that term has become yeah but now that's like not a good term but it's like okay back then but that's you know so it's like when does that shift like it's, like people are mm-hmm. all coming into the shift at different times at different points and yeah it, there's something to be said about like good faith versus bad faith right yeah. so it's like yeah. you know it's not it's not this horrible thing in the world if you don't necessarily know everything off the bat but then when you're then uh i don't know what the right verb would be but not not instructed but when you're when you're informed of the change yeah, and, like, and you yeah. double down on being like no i don't want to that's no, when it becomes yeah, an issue yeah. and i'll give you an example that related like i brought up song of the south so yes, yes. song of the, for those of you who don't know song of the south is is like the disney film from the uh mid to late 40s just after world war ii based off of a famous uh book called uncle remus's tales or whatever and basically the premise of the book is these little white kids Go hang out with this old black guy, Uncle Remus, because of course you know in the South, and he's like works on their plantation. <laughs> um, that's important, right? No, and he tells them folk story. tales, right? Yeah. Kind of like you know African American. Okay, okay. Not spirituals. That's like a song, but kind of just like no, folk like tales. Fables. One of them is like Briar Rabbit, which is the inspiration mm-hmm. of the now disassembled Splash Mountain, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but. Uh, the film is kind of... So it doesn't... He's not a slave in the movie, but it's like... They don't say whether this is pre or post slavery, but in any case, he's a black guy working on the plantation and he's like the magical black character. Like, isn't come on, it, let me tell you kids a story. And, yeah, isn't it like the like the happy-go-lucky <clears throat> slave or something like that? It's like... The, the happy... Exactly. It's the happy slave. Like, like, he's, he's just happy to be... There. zippity doo is essentially like a slave work song kind of he's yeah. not in the fields when he's singing it but mm-hmm. it's basically that's like the song he sings is zip but do that yeah. comes from this movie yeah. um you know so i don't even know if you can find this movie no, probably I, today I, you can I, I, like on youtube or i don't know I mean, it's, it's not something you have to go like the dark web or anything to find but it's not something that I they mean, have I've released tried, i've tried to find it because like i'm like what is so bad about this For, movie because like like no one would talk about it because they're just like it's so racist. It's so bad. I'm like, it's, what are you talking about? You know, like when fr- I was younger. And so I was like, I gotta, mm-hmm. I gotta see this movie. Like, what the hell are people talking about? From from what I've read and heard, could not find it's it. it's for the most part, it's fairly boring. 
<laughs> yeah. Like, it's not like this. It's not like Birth of a Nation, which is, like, exaggeratedly offensive. Uh-huh. Where you're just, like, in shock of how <laughs> offensive it is. Yeah. It's just, like, not a good look. Especially for... Every, it's, it's more of a problem because Disney is considered this, like perfectly inoffensive, family-friendly mm-hmm. thing. Um, but the reason why I'm bringing this up is that the reason why Walt Disney wanted to tell this story and make this film in the first place is because, you know, for the context of like the, the feature films he had done up to this point were all more or less based off of German f- mm-hmm. novels or fairy tales like Snow White, Pinocchio, Bambi even was like a like German like novel. A like a cheap American story to tell. He wanted, but well, not so much cheap, but he wanted, especially after World War well, II. because it's he, not animated, so it's, you know. Well, there was animated sections. No, I know. I just mean like, I don't know. No, the money wasn't a factor. Oh, okay. it, it was, the issue was, I mean, if anything, it, it had some early live action animation hybrids mm-hmm. um, scenes, like where he's interacting with yeah, like a, like yeah. so if anything, it wasn't cheap, it, oh, okay. but he okay. wanted to post World War II tell a, what he saw as an American story, mm-hmm. right? And so he consulted with like African American groups. Yeah. Like and um Oh, I, didn't they tell him no? And, and they were like, like you oh, shouldn't do this. This is offensive and he was kind of just like, no, nah, I'm going to do it anyway. So <laughs> the issue with that so, so tying this back to what we were saying, it's it's not racist. The movie isn't racist in that it has it well it has that's not true. It is racist. It has all these racist tropes, all these mm-hmm. um hurtful uh conventions and stereotypes Mm -hmm. but the thing is is that it's not that walt disney woke up one day and was like i hate black people i want to make this no right it was more so that that he didn't care yeah that it was gonna upset people yeah that was the the problem so it's it's Mm -hmm. so the thing isn't that he wanted to make it in the first place that's a problem the Mm -hmm. problem is that when he was then told by the communities you should not make this there's several problems with this he did it anyway Right, yeah. and so that's the the problem. Yeah. Um. So same with like the Lone Ranger. Someone I, had to have brought up that yeah, I, at I just, some point in the process. Just, this was not know, something that they were like, "What? How could I? We didn't know that people would be. You, no, you had yeah. to have known and I, did it anyway. I feel like you know, in the in in America in the Americas, it's like I don't know. Maybe it's more difficult for me or more difficult for people in general because it's like they've been like their voices have been oppressed so much that it's like. When I was five years old and had a, a, a luau party, I wasn't, tr- and you know, there was a, a grass skirt and, and coconut bra, like, you know, my uncle was wearing one and there was like a hula hoop comp- competition. Yeah. I wasn't trying to be racist, but you know, but like now it would be like, oh, like, you know, maybe let's like actually appreciate it and not like just yeah. have these, you know, things yeah. or like, you know, like, the issue is that your uncle had a coconut bra. The issue is that <laughs> the implication is like not that anyone at the party was thinking this. The implication yeah. is just a reminder it, it of was like, American subjugation of the Hawaiian people. Yeah, or like just like making making a kind of like uh, I don't know. I guess not character, but like you know, did you ever dress up as a Native American? You know, for, in like second grade for during like. Oh yeah, 100%. Thanksgiving. You know, and, we did like a little like pres- yeah, like, it was a like little the skit. Yeah, Pilgrims versus Indians. And well, not like, versus, but it was all like well, it was all yeah. sanitized. Well, and, no, like, you know, it's just like, and you learn about like, oh, and they help them farm, and then you know, you make a little hand turkey and shit. Yeah, like I don't think anyone was trying I think I to play, be. Racist. I think I played like Santo or something. Or what's his name? <laughs> or Squanto? Excuse me. Squanto. I think I I think I was Squanto. I don't think I was in a play. I remember being in a in a we had a musical. Yeah concert thing and and we were singing up on the up on the rooftop yeah very and i was a little reindeer oh like it's say oh like for christmas yeah, yeah 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 but but no i don't think anyone was trying to be racist or like deliberately racist you know but like now we would be like oh you know that's really insensitive like we shouldn't <laughs> or at the very least it's just like we eliminated and genocided these people yeah and now we're gonna like kind of pretend like change the history kind of it's yeah. it and have like eight-year-olds like wear like the headdresses and be like yeah like you know what i mean it's not like this horribly racist thing but it's just like it's just like hmm, like maybe there's things we could be doing better maybe there's just like we could do a little bit better here yeah you know let's be a little better yeah like when i was like four months old my halloween costume was pocahontas like Mm -hmm. (laughs) well my understanding it's those things are it's okay to dress up as these characters for right halloween it's when you like 
Like, there was an issue with one year when Moana came out. Yeah. They had Maui outfits, but, like, they had, like, sleeves, like, with darker yeah. skin. No, but I thought... Or, like, the, ta- like you I know, know what I mean? but I thought the sleeves were just to have the tattoos. But I think it also had darker skin. That's what I'm saying, is that... that be good? No, the point is, like, you're doing black... You're doing brown oh, face. Oh, oh, So no. it's okay if you dress up as, like, oh. a character. It's like... It's like people cosplay as, as Lost Airbender characters all the time. Okay, yeah. That's not a problem. Nice. The problem is when you, like... Like so, acknowledge slant your eyes or something. No, like no, you know no, what I mean. No. You like no, you try I, to then guess, take on the racial. No, yeah. I guess I didn't think of it as that. I just meant like oh, like representation. But like yeah. I from my understanding, from what I've heard from Q, it's it's okay to dress up as like a character okay. as long as you're not like trying to emulate that the racial characteristics. No, of that character. no, 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 no. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, like, like I'm bald. Like if I drew a, red, a blue arrow on my head, it wouldn't be racist all of a sudden because he's like he's coded as like a like okay. an Asian Eastern character, East, yeah, you know, yeah. character. To or like like a little white girl could dress up as Tiana, but like you know. But like, don't put like black. Well, no, I feel like face, people would you know? know not to do that. I I don't know. I'm trying. To... Who knows? But then what about like? What the hell does this have to do with Pirates of the Caribbean? Dead men tell no it tales. It brings up. So many questions. Anyway, but what about like you know how like <laughs> white people are obsessed with like Asian culture, like Chinese and and like yeah. Japanese. Like, is it wrong to wear like a kimono? No, or, it's like... just it's it's well. I mean, I'm not Chinese, so I don't know why you're asking me. But what I would say is, from what I've heard from know. people, is that it's it's not like this single act is somehow intrinsically evil. The issue is that you're doing it without recognizing. The, the A, the appropriation of it, yes. and B, the the cultural significance of essentially, I mean, I don't want to make waves, but essentially on the whole, yeah. not you specifically, not even America specifically, but just the Western white world mm-hmm. subjugating and oppressing the Eastern Asian world. So it's yeah. just kind of like... I guess it's, it's difficult because some people... Actually- it's like if a Nazi dressed up as a Jew. Uh- Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, but that's what I'm trying to say. What? It's like... No, but I'm saying it's like the oppressors, like... I I guess so, but I think some people actually want to, like, show appreciation for the culture, but but it's hard to know. delineate. You're, you know? I'm not Chinese, so you gotta... No, I know, Chinese I know. Person. I was just thinking about that, because I, I said the thing about Tiana, but I'm like, okay, well, people know not to do blackface, but then, like, what if, you know, a little white girl wants to dress up as Mulan, and, you know, and then she wears the dress, and, you know... But like, that's not a racial characteristic. I don't it's know. not a I racial don't know. characteristic as the outfit. It's cultural, and then well, you go... Well, she... Go, they might do her makeup a little slanty. I don't know. I do, okay, we need to stop before we get into... The <laughs> I don't know. Like, I just want to know. Why are you so stressed that... With, just, let's talk about pirates! <laughs> Ah, I just brought the Lone Ranger quickly, anyways. but that's why it bombed because it was it was giant up in red face. That's why it bombed. So the movie kept this movie kept getting pushed back because that movie bombed, and they were like, "Do people give a shit about Johnny Depp anymore?" We spent like twenty I don't think minutes the talking about. Problem was Johnny Depp. <laughs> I think the problem Ugh. was. <laughs> well, this was definitely the point in his career where he was like really phoning it in. Um, like he was he had like an yeah. earpiece in on set to like so someone could feed him his lines and where like. Did you see? That. Is I'm that not, true? It, yeah, it came out during I think one of his trials or something. Or someone said it. How how do people do this? Like they must because they're a star. People want to come see a star. They don't want to see a couple. They don't. They don't care if the star lo- knew his lines or not. No, I know. It's just so crazy to me how like unprofessional people can be. And like like when you were talking about um, Marlon Brando for Apocalypse Now, and just like showing up not knowing his lines and like being like 200 pounds overweight like even though when the character's supposed to be like gaunt and yeah like like, what like (laughs) i would be so mad like (laughs) i'm sure people on set were mad but um okay so why don't we why don't we talk about what we what we thought let's let's go through the movie so um right off the bat we got the disney logo and this castle scary it's like kind of like they made it look yeah. scary. And this uh, is the era, I think they still do this. This is the era where every single Disney movie, the intro has to have like a stylized, unique yes. castle. It's like, can't you just have the, we could, I don't know. It was like novel the first one or two times, no, no, but then no. every movie had it. They like I thought they now, did a good, yeah. they, they did it well when it's like, okay, it's a pirate flag, but then everything else is the same. Yeah, or it'll be like icy or like, Tinkerbell will come out and fly around or something. There's like always a something, you know. There's always a something. Oh my gosh! When Ancient I... philosophers used to always say, "There's always something." <laughs> peoples is peoples. Peoples is peoples. No, 
when this came on, I was like, okay, what are they going to do next? Are they going <laughs> to... Are they going to kill a dog and then sing jauntily? Because, like, all the other films, like... <laughs> Have started very gruesome. Like, <laughs> very yeah. gruesome, and then they were just like la 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 la. la. <laughs> so, I was a little apprehensive when I saw that castle, and I was like, Ugh. yeah. But it starts off serious, but not like any gruesome. So we we get introduced to Henry Turner, uh, and this boy yeah. is gonna kill himself to find his father, no. Will Turner, and Will. Was he? I don't know. Yeah, because he tied like a um. I thought it was just to get down there. Yeah, but I'm saying he, he could die. What if he wasn't down there? I'm not saying he was suicidal. I'm saying what if he yeah, what if he wasn't what if he was what if he was in what if he was in um Calcutta or something? Or where where were they uh, where were they in the third one? Where did they go? Not Shanghai. Where did oh, they Singapore. go? Singapore. Singapore, thank you. Yeah, what they if went he to was in Singapore. They went to Singapore. Yeah, what if he was in Singapore? Um <laughs> Anyway, so so Will Will so we get uh, uh Orlando Bloom back. For a very brief cameo. Yeah. He's he's in the movie at the very beginning and then at the very end. And he sounds like He's all gruff. He, he like sounds like Skarsgard. <laughs> yeah, he's all he's all uh, barnacly. It's been like ten years and he, he sounds like he's smoked like five yeah. packs a day for ten years. Like Yeah. But I don't understand why he's had so many physical changes. Cause I thought the whole reason why the du- Davy Jones and the Dutchman's crew looked like that is because he wasn't they, fulfilling his promise. He wasn't of, doing his job, yeah. But I thought the whole point was Will's gonna do his job now and they're like good guys but, now, kinda. Does he not do his job so that his son can visit? I think him? people. I think people would just be like they would have forgotten. Yeah. I think they were just worried audiences forgot because to be yeah. fair, this happened ten years ago. <laughs> At this point, the, the the movie where he became the captain of the Dutchman yeah. came out ten years earlier. Yeah. So maybe the writers were afraid that people had forgotten, so they had to make it very clear like he's like Davy Jones now, but like he's still a good dude. But like yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. Um. So, uh, he's like. Because his son's like, I want to be on the crew, too. He's like, you cannot. Oh, I don't understand why both Will Jr. and Henry are both vehemently dedicated to their fathers. And they hardly know them. Yeah, uh, like, especially Henry. <laughs> yeah, like, like Henry's seen him, like, what? Tw- twice in his whole life? Maybe once or twice? Like... <laughs> Well, we did see in the post credit scene of the third film is when Henry's older and he's like nine. Or I know, yeah. Comes. Yeah, so he's probably seen him like once. Yeah. And now this is this is time number two. Yeah. This scene is, is number two, <laughs> interaction number two. But he's like obsessed because like it shows his room at first and it's like, he's like, you know, counting down the years until dad can come back ashore. Well, he's and, heard like, kind of awesome things. His like, dad's, I mean, if you were a kid and you heard of all true, the shit your dad true. did. That's kind of awesome. That's true. Um, true. But then we have a time jump uh, nine years into the future. So now, so I think I read online in that it initial so scene, silly. Henry is like 12. <laughs> so now he's like in his early 20s now. That is so silly. Why, um, <laughs> why didn't it just start off with him being older? <laughs> and then him still doing the same thing. Like, hey, dad, I'm going to, you know, do something to try to break your curse. I, I don't know. <laughs> It's very baffling. Um, Henry's all grown up. He's now in the British Navy. And he is a rapscallion causing problems. Because uh, they, you know, he, he know because of his father, because of the obsession with his father, he yes. now knows all the myths of the sea. Yeah. Right? Um, Which he explicitly says. He says, I know all the myths of the sea. <laughs> And, and he's on the ship, and the ship is gonna go into this, like, scary, like, place. And he's like, no, if you go in there, it'll be doomed for you. This is the devil's, devil's triangle. triangle. And I guess him suggesting, like, that is treason? And they're like, we're ripping off your sleeves. Oh, be- yeah, because the, the British, like, love hierarchy. And if you try to break it, then it's like, nope. Even if it's a bad idea. So they're like, what are you, what are you, just a little, a little swashbuckling... You know, tell? You know, <laughs> you're nobody. You don't tell me what to do. Yeah. And so the captain's like, onward! Yeah. I do like, he He kind of has the tenacity of his mama. You know, yes. he reminded me a lot of like her outburst, especially in the first film. And she's like, <laughs> but you must take me to show the pirate code. Blah, 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 blah. Um, I feel like he kind of <laughs> has that vibe a little bit. Kind of like a, like a, like a, like a nerd. Like mm-hmm. kind of like a know-it-all. Um, 
But again, we, we get to see, uh, you know, I just wrote down here, I love how violent this franchise has always been. <laughs> A dude gets a sword through his chest from behind at some point. Oh my gosh, yeah. Like, there is some pretty violent stuff here. Oh my god, When J- later on when Jack is going to get beheaded and there's heads in the ba- in the basket already. Uh, yeah. I did not think that. I, I thought, oh, wouldn't it be funny if they showed heads in the basket? And they did, and I was like, Scary. who is this movie for? <laughs> Um, I don't know. But the the crew, the, the ship goes into the Devil's Triangle and they get attacked by Javier Bardem and his crew. Of Merry Men. Um, Mary. I will say, though, I think the performance is ridiculous, but I do like the character designs of these. Like, I I think they They're did a good job. They're barely there! But that's right. No, but I like, I like the, <laughs> I like what they choose to leave there, you know? Uh, well, I, I wasn't really afraid of his men because there was barely any, there were, no. there's barely any man. It was just yeah. like a torso or something. <laughs> Or, well, I'm not saying I was afraid of him. I just, I just like. No, the I know. Design. I just mean like, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the, his hair was kind of cool. Why does his hair not adhere to gravity? Because he doesn't. He doesn't exist in this realm. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just not for this performance. It's like <laughs> it's way too campy. His, I, I understand his historically is accurate campy. because he's supposed to be Spanish, like from Spain. Yeah, I, Which he is, I'm sorry. Isn't he? The. Yeah, no, Javier Bardem is not, like, Latino. Like, he's not yeah, from he's Central America. He's, yeah. he's Spanish. Um, is that right? Like, Hispanic is anyone yeah. who speaks Spanish, or, but Latino is, like, Central yeah. South America? Yeah. Or Mexico? Okay. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Um, but I know it's historically accurate, but his lisp... Not, like, lisp. I'm not trying to, like, no, be ableist, like... but, like, like the, the Spanish accent, like, the way they say that, it just... It makes it not scary. Like, he's no, yeah. kind of goofy. Because it, it, it makes the... Isn't it the S's or yeah. THs? Yeah. Yeah, it's like a, kind of like a lisp. So, um, and his his yeah. whole speech again, it was like in the trailer when he's like, "Will you tell that to him, please?" Because <laughs> he's also like he's also like making it sound like he's like, "Hey, everybody, it's me, Salazar." You know, he's kind of talking like that too. So, um, <laughs> An Arjuna, someone, Captain Salamander. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but honestly, that. fucking best line in the movie, and by best I mean worst. He's like, because he basically, he leaves one person alive. Yes, yes, yes. So and it happens to be Henry, because he's yeah, like. Yeah, so they're going around and, and he hates Telling the tales. Pirates. And yeah, he's like, please. can you please tell that Jack, you know, I wish I could tell him. But dead men tell no tales. Even though I just told you a tale. <laughs> I, I don't understand. This feels really. The, I thought the Why whole point would of the. Why he be saying that? The, I thought the whole point of that phrase. That's from the original ride. Sure. Uh, and and the par- and Cotton's parrot says it in the first movie. Okay. Um, I think the implication is just like like if you come upon a shipwreck, like you can't find out what happened because dead men tell no tales. No. They're dead. They can't tell. No, you. I understand. But why would Salazar be saying it? Like I feel like because it's dumb. Someone else would say it. Like this like, is up there with Jack being like, you know, well, you know, it's a pirate's life for me. <laughs> It's like up there in terms of just like but, way forced, way too forced. But do you see what I'm saying? Forced. Like it just seems strange that Salazar is saying it. You know, like it's. I find it strange that he's saying anything. If if he was like, do you know why I only leave one man alive? And then you know, and then and then maybe Henry says because dead men tell no tales or something. He's like bingo. That would be a little bit understandable. It would be still cheesy, but it would you know. Whereas like. This burnt zombie man is saying... This burnt zombie dead man. Dead man, dead man. Anyway, so we go uh, to... I think it's... It was it? St. Martin, I yes, guess? Yes, St. Martin. Um, I love how it said St. Martin, comma, Caribbean. And I was like, <laughs> ah, yes, the country of Caribbean. <laughs> um, so we have this woman, Karina, uh, who's being accused... Who's accused of being a witch. She's in yes. jail. The priest is trying to read her, like, trying to get the confession from... Not a confession, but, like, um, like perform, last, like... Yeah. Like, like, not confession for legal reasons, no, but confession, last, like, spiritual last confession. Rights, yeah, and, like, uh, yeah. But why is it beautiful, smart women are always accused of witches in this time period? Because they're smart. And they're like, wait a minute. You're not allowed to go to school. How the hell do you know all this? Yeah. Um, so we have that going on, but she's able to break out. She's like, and in the time of our conversation... I've picked this lock. I also have to confess that I p- I picked this lock. <laughs> Bam! And then the priest goes down. Um, so in this town, I guess they've built a new bank and then they have a new safe. 
And they're like, look inside our beautiful safe. No one can get into it. And who's in there? Jack fucking Sparrow. I will say, he always has the goofiest entrances. Um, <laughs> this soul scene was ridiculous. So he The whole movie was ridiculous. <laughs> but this one in particular is just... What? Okay. This so- movie is like the whole movie just jumps the shark. There are moments where it jumps the shark the highest, but this is this whole movie is just ridiculous. It was it was just very predictable writing in the beginning, and so you know the guy is going all high and mighty. He's like, it's five inches thick. It's so strong, no one can get in. Blah blah blah. And I was like, watch, either it's gonna be gone or someone's you know like, oh, it's gonna be gone. And then what? What's in it when they open it? Jack Sparrow. Yeah. And then, so he comes stumbling out. And for some reason in this movie, he's like the drunkest he has ever been. Yeah, and I was... so strange. I was I was wondering that. Like, I don't know if it has to do with... The, they try to have this character arc where he feels really, like, um, defeated, right? Because his crew, like, loses faith in him. He, like, trades so in the silly. compass. It's... It, they don't do it well. I think they were trying to do something. They were trying to do something along the lines of the like same. he's he's like coping. He's drinking even more than usual. I think because he's like no, but he was drinking before they left him. I don't know then. That's I don't know. Point. Anyway, so he comes out and he's like, "What? What am I doing? Where am I?" And he's like, "All right, I'm I'm Robin the Big." And then the I don't know who the mayor. Someone's wife comes out of the the vault too, so Jack yeah. Jack somehow got into the vault with the mayor's wife. That was Jack Shack. Was was shacking, shacking up. up with the mayor's wife and is pissed drunk. Yeah, <laughs> and forgot he was robbing the bank. Yeah, <laughs> um, but I think this. I think you're you're right to criticize him being drunk, like so ridiculously like, drunk. Drunk, sure, but like like incoherent. Like, whereas, like, beforehand, he was, like, very, like, he could still function, right? But now it's just, like, oh, what, uh, what am I doing? Can yeah. you tell me where I am? Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Well, I think we, we spoke about flanderization before, but I think this is really, again, each yeah. film, he's yeah, become so, increasingly yeah. more Jack Sparrow-y. Like, whatever that means. I guess so. Yeah. Right? He's just become a parody of himself where it's, like, okay, who is Jack Sparrow? Okay, he's drunk. He kind of wiggles his yeah. arms around a lot and kind of <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like He's you just wrote like a very, it's like, you, <laughs> it's like they just wrote out all of like his characteristics and just like that, that became his whole character. Yeah. 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 Um, again, it also feels like Depp is really aging out of the role. Um, yeah. And I don't just mean like age wise, literally his age, but just <laughs> like, again, he, he'd see, he's really phoning it in. I'll say it. I'll say it. They're all old because they were old. Historically, dudes like that would have died 20 years earlier from elements, from disease, from, from occupational <laughs> hazards of get, yeah. getting killed by getting, the by the getting over British. Thrown overboard or something. How is Gibbs? Well, I'm, gra- I'm glad Gibbs is back. We love but, Gibbs. But Gibbs would but certainly not have shit. lived this long. <laughs> he was all this shit in the first movie and he's all this shit. What? 20 years later? Yeah. 14, this movie came out about 14, 14 years, years later. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but they, this this movie, yeah, is just absolutely ridiculous. So, they they basically, they they pull a Fast and Furious. <laughs> this is literally the climax of, I think, the fifth or sixth Fast and Furious movie. And they now pull you, the, wait. The, the safe through the streets. And now you see me. Wait. Oh, Jeff. What? Or, what's his name? Jeff, right? Who, the writer? Yeah. Oh, Jeff. He, what, he wrote He, now you he see loves me. the things. He loves the same things. Yeah, and, and Now You See Me, they like do He a, wrote Now You See Me? He, that's what it says on your notes. Oh, catch me if you can. Oh, never mind. Maybe if you weren't reading something else when I was I wasn't it. reading anything. All right, well. Anyways, well. never mind. But yes, it's the, the whole silly trope of, of pulling a giant ass vault out of a building. Yes. Which is, which, if I had a nickel for every time <sighs> this happened... In movies, I would have three nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird. It happened three times. <laughs> that's a that's a famous verb. Um, but um, yeah, so they're pulling this safe through the city streets. But um, uh oh, the safe didn't come through the wall. They're carrying the whole fucking bank. With the them. whole <laughs> ass bank is being dragged through Saint Mark. Uh- <laughs> 
And and to be fair to these two directors, oh my goodness. I don't think the issue with this movie is necessarily the direction. Um, <laughs> you know, like I think there there are oftentimes good visuals and direction here and there. Like I, it's not really that big of a deal and it's not that monumental, but I liked the shot of like that stone worker like hammer and something like it's a silhouette and you just see everything go by i'm yeah. like i was like this is like the where we're at where i'm it's like the bare minimum i'm just like oh, that's a well-composed shot that had an interesting <laughs> movement through it and interesting no, I was, contrast and, i was so impressed when they turned a corner and it like it didn't it, crash into yeah, yeah. <laughs> it did it so perfectly i you know the only thing i could think of watching that was like what the hell was this day like on set like like, well, that, well, what? clearly that was all CGI is the thing. Oh. That's the thing is that, again, the Pirates of the Caribbean that franchise sucks. reflects a change in the industry. If you, like, look at them all, yeah. like, from the from the start to now, mm. is how much more... It's like if the first film was 75% practical, 25% CGI, it's, like, flipped. Flipped, yeah. Um, you know. Well, it looked pretty real. Or at least... Some of the locations are real, but that was not they, real building. Maybe I mean, when they first take it off, the foundation, that was real? I don't know. I mean, it looked pretty believable, but anyways, mm-hmm. I, I was just thinking of like all the logistics. I was just like, what is the insurance? How did they time this? How did they, how is this happening right now? Anyways. Well, that's, that's the disappointing thing. That's why so many movies will use CGI for things that you wouldn't think. Like yeah. there's actually a surprising amount of VFX in non-action-y blockbuster-y movies huh. um, to, to do like little things that you wouldn't expect. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of an example, but like, um, if the sky isn't the way you want it to mm-hmm. look. So like, let's say you shot on a very overcast day, mm-hmm. you know, you'll CGI. I think you even did that for my thesis film, actually. No, frankly. yeah, you did. Harvey would just, Har- Harvey, my, my, uh, Hello, DP, Harvey. um, who was my DP, but he also was the color. He also did color on we it. We miss you. Um, he was just like, um, so we filmed on a lot of overcast days, but that's not really the vibe you're going for. So we'll just like basically take out the sky and Which, just put in like a like yeah. a regular sky, like a blue sky with some clouds and Which I feel like it's fine but I don't know I feel like like what I What made know. the first film I great was like, how practical it felt like it felt real isn't as fun as it used to be I guess <laughs> now you're just like acting up like with green of screens and yeah. yeah and like people in suits with a bunch of ping pongs on them <laughs> yeah and that's why a lot of the performances like that feel so stale i mean we just saw ant-man and the wasp quantumania oh my god um quantumania and and 95 percent of that movie is on a green screen which is fine but it it's what we've learned from the new avatar uh, movie is that you could do effects really well you just have to like put care into it yeah whereas like you hear these stories like of these marvel vfx artists being like pushed like working 18 hours a day yeah. every day and like still not have enough people or time to do what they need to do, so it like it looks like shit because you're yeah, not putting the time crazy, into it. Because there's like all these like 20, 30 people on 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 it too. I'm like, what is going? Oh, on? Oh, more than that. You mean the credits? Oh, more than that. Well, I guess so. It just like it just hundreds of people. So much work, I guess. But not everyone wants to wait like 10, 12 years, like James Cameron. Well, that's the thing is that James Cameron's <laughs> meticulous, and Marvel they release like ten things a year. Yeah. So that's why it looks really shoddy. Um, I wouldn't say the effects in this are terrible, but it definitely you feel a sense of. I think what made the f- original films better, are um not necessarily better, but just it, you feel like you could walk into the film. Like it feels like you can tell. Yeah, you can tell. It feels like, like it, it, you, quite a few scenes. Mm-hmm. You know, like oh, this is obviously fake. Like, yeah. Um, but in any case, so Karina now ex- um accused witch is running around. She she wants to go get some star info, so she goes. To go look through this telescope. And it's clearly a phallic symbol the because the man comes in. He's like, no woman can touch my Herschel. Uh, no one has ever, no woman has ever touched my Handled my Herschel. Oh, I handled my Herschel. But no, but on the outside, it's, there was a sign that said, no dogs, no women. It's like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. <laughs> the two, the two genders. No dogs, no women. What? Um, and, and it was in this scene, I think because Jack runs in and he's like, there's a woman and a pirate in here. <laughs> but you know what? There's no sign that says no pirates. That was funny. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> this is where freaked out. <laughs> yeah, and, and this is where I noticed and I wrote down that the writing definitely feels different. Um, it it felt different in the last movie, but it's still Ted and Terry. Yeah. This one feels like it was written by someone different, and we were talk about this like this the way that 
that this writer will construct scenes and the back and forth, especially between the men and women, just oh, feels very weird. So and it was like I don't very even know sexual. if I can call it low hanging fruit, but it was just like every every chance that there was. I would say low hanging fruit. It was like, just like or like obvious choices. Like things, it just feels very like obvious. Things you wouldn't even like think to make that way. Like I wouldn't even think about that. But and yet it was still like some kind of joke. And I was like, what we just you just said something like this like two minutes ago. What it mm-hmm. do you think it's still funny? Like, come on, like, okay, we get it. Everyone's head is in the gutter, they're crude, they're, you know, nasty old pirate men or yeah. British men, whatever. I, I yeah. it's this is later in the film, but to your point, I may as well bring it up now. When uh she when Karina is hanging from her neck Oh yes, yes. But Henry's holding her, yes. they make minimum three jokes about him grabbing her ass. Yeah. Within like a minute. <laughs> Within like a minute. It's, it's like, okay, we get it. It's so funny because he's holding her and unfortunately in order to hold her up, he has to kind of squeeze her ass. <laughs> okay, it's oh, we get it. It would be funny if it was like once. It was like three times in like one minute. Like, just talk. Just say, like, okay, are we partners? Are we gonna make a deal, okay? And then you can make a joke about graphic cross or something. Or don't at all, you know? Or just Let me keep it to yourself, Henry. Yeah, just say like, oh, this is a very compromised position. Well, then it's her making the jokes. He's like, you know, like... No, yeah, but like, you gotta make the same joke three times in a row? Like... Yeah. <laughs> we um, get it. His hand is on your stern, okay? <laughs> and then like 10 minutes later, they make the joke again. So it's yeah. just weird. Um... But in any case, so so Jack and the crew, they escape with the safe, but I guess all the money kind of fell out during the chase. So there's yeah. like one coin. And all the pirates are basically fed up. They're like, bro, we've been doing this with you for like over a decade. We're done. We're done. <laughs> there's a single coin left and he takes it for himself. And he's like, well, you know, I risked my life getting this for you guys. So you should, all so pay, me. You should pay me. And they're like, the fuck? And Marty's so mad. <laughs> He's like, screw this. He's like, fuck you, Jack. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was just yawning. So yeah, they, they do a walkout. And they go on strike. Bounce. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Karina and Henry link up. Um, he's in a hospital, chained up. Um, for treason, but also for treason, he but... got... Oh, he got knocked out by Salazar. Yeah, yeah. I think. And, and, uh, and like, you know, hey, she... You're the only one who survived. How interesting. And I guess they're both like two C nerds, so they're like, you know, she's she's more on the science side, he's more on like the supernatural side. Yes, so they're like, yes. you know. Um, meanwhile, Jack, he's very distraught because I think he derives a lot of self confidence from being a captain. Yeah. So when he has no one to captain, he, even he, though he's barely a captain, he yeah. was, like when he was talking. It's to very Davy rare Jones. we see him be a captain in these movies. <laughs> like when he was talking to Davy Jones, he was like been captain for 13 years he's like well technically only two <laughs> yeah um so jack he he's willing to trade his famous compass for booze for booze yeah um and um i guess by doing that i guess we didn't I, this was never established but i guess so the compass so shows you confused. what the compass show brings you to what you want most but if you of betray course. the compass which is very vague what does it mean to betray the compass I think that that means let it go, right? I guess so. Um, so betray the compass. It, away, it will know. unleash your greatest fear. Which I guess is but Salazar coming is to get Salazar... him. Yeah. Why is that his greatest fear? And also, why did the why did the cave, like, crumble? Because it, I guess it unleashed... It, I don't know. No, it, but it was there beforehand. So wouldn't they just, like, be able to leave or, like... Or wouldn't it have, like... I don't been know. formed once they get stuck in there and cursed or something. I don't know. Anyways, total retcon. Kid, it's not that kind of movie. <laughs> but it should be. Um, total retcon. So, so basically, he, now he they're gets like it from yeah. this other. He gets it from this other captain. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, that's in the, what? That's, that's the, later on. That's oh, later oh, on. Okay, whatever. So so um, Salazar has now been unleashed, and he wants to get I'm Jack. Going to so, um, okay, fine. We can, we can talk about what you were going to say. So we'll talk about this flashback, but this flashback happens later in the movie. That's it's why I want the fla- flashback. Okay, okay go. Itself. Fine. Then then just go. So he portrays it. Salazar is free. And then what happened? 
But no, we may as well. So we'll talk. So the reason why he wants to kill Jack is because <laughs> he, Jack is the reason why. No, I wasn't going to talk there. about why they were there. I was going to talk about him getting the compass. Oh. But then we may as well talk about the more important thing uh, from the flashback. Sure, sure, sure. That's actually relevant to what we're saying, which is that Jack's the reason why they went to the Devil's Triangle and yes. died in the first place. Yes. But yeah, so Jack gets the compass from just some random... Jack's basically just like a random crew member on the ship that's getting mm-hmm. attacked. Because Salazar is like... Uh, was kind of like... is like a Spanish Norrington. He's like hunting yeah, down he pirates. He hates pirates, yeah. And, and this dude has a compass. He's like, it's all up to you now, Jack. <laughs> but Which is a total retcon. He's supposed to get it from Tia Valma. Complete retcon. Complete. Oh my god! And when the when the baby Jack came on, oh my <laughs> Peter god. was like, "What the fuck is this?" Look, <laughs> this uh, uh, like this is the era also, in my, Hollywood my where lip made a little fart. What's that? My lip made a little fart. Uh, Sorry, Peter. Uh, Peter was like, "What is this deep fake?" Yeah, this this a, I a point in Hollywood. Yeah, the, the in this era of Hollywood is when you start seeing like the CGI the. Like the de well, it, it happened before, but you start to see a lot more de aging. Uh, the year before this movie came out, um, Rogue One, the Star Wars movie, uh, featured a Carrie. character. Well, Carrie, yes, but um, more famously because he's in the movie for longer. There's a character, Grand Moff Tarkin. Mm. Um, the actor had been long dead, so they mm. basically had a guy, and then they CGI'd the face over him. Oh. And that one was actually not that bad, um, but it was still kind of an uncanny valley thing. Mm-hmm. So this is in that era when it's like we're we're getting scarily good at deep fakes, which is going to be very politically destabilizing in like the next coming decades. <laughs> but oh yeah, if we have videos of world leaders saying like we're going to bomb this country, and then we have to like figure out okay, is oh, it a real video? Or, yeah, so it's really scary it. that this technology how that's, advanced. This, oh, okay, that's. But right. I'm saying back in 2017. I didn't think such. Think about AI I mean, with the use, voices I with the um I people could basically make people voices would use of it for such evil. People can people are using AI technology to like recreate people's voices and it doesn't sound like a robot. Like you can make it sound like Joe Biden. Just said it naturally. So it's like scary. Are we gonna people gonna use that to create like oh, audio I- clips of like someone saying something bad? You know what I'm saying? So I saw something and it was like you could get this app where Snoop Dogg reads the Bible. <laughs> Anyways. Anyway, so I'm saying at this point, it, these were not good, is my point. And it looks horrible. It looks scary. It looks like, it It just looks bad. It's, the CGI just looks bad. But Just um, get a younger actor. But Jack is able, you know, quick-witted, he, you know, tricks Salazar. He, and he's t- actually a good seaman. Like, you know, we never... Oh, yeah, he's a good seaman, all right. Uh, oh, sorry, is that is that too much for the show? A man, a man at sea... A captain because he's you know quick witted and he can like you know he knows um he knows the boats you know he knows the limits he knows where, the boats where he can like you know so mm-hmm. he does this fancy little trick and basically traps Salazar in there yeah um and that's like really the only time I would say we get to see him as like a full blown captain doing captain anything Jack Sparrow yeah mm-hmm. um besides just like ordering people around. Um, like he's actually coming up with a good idea. He's like actually like doing something. Yeah. Um, so Salazar and his dudes, they go into this little cave. And for some reason, I don't know why, there's like some firepower lava shit that comes out of the water. And then they're all burned now. Basically, they die. <laughs> it, it, in summary, dead. <laughs> but they're not dead, obviously, because they're like little burnt zombie men mm-hmm. um in any case i don't so, understand that so anyway so now salazar he wants his revenge we've said all that okay yeah back back in st Martin, <laughs> jackson prison and henry comes and he's like i know you worked with my father and i want to go find the beside the trident of poseidon because it'll break all curses so yes. if we do that then my father can come home and come on land mm-hmm. and stuff um and it's interesting that henry breaks jack out of jail because that's like one of the first things that Will does with Jack yes. in the first film. Um, but again, this is where I know Depp has really, be- he's basically become self-parody. It's just like every line he says, it just feels like it was, it- talk about AI. It feels like it's just like an AI wrote, like what would Jack Sparrow say? Why, why did he make a dummy of himself? <laughs> In the, in the jail? In the jail, yeah. Did you see, like, yeah. there was, like, a figure looking out the window? But it was just, like, a hay bale. Just, to be, just to be weird. <laughs> just to be funny. That's, 
That's funny, but I feel like that's not as funny as that one time where someone was coming and he was he just like laid on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and there's like, what? What? What are you saying? <laughs> that was in the first one. He was trying he was trying to break out of the yeah, uh, yeah. break the lock and then you hear someone coming <laughs> and he <laughs> And he goes, he's laying on the hay, like, oh, hello, how are you doing? <laughs> oh, that's, that, honestly, that's... now I just want to watch the first movie again. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, but um, I, I was thinking this during the movie that, like, I, I don't know if it would have made it better or worse because I, I don't really have a lot of faith in this director and these writers, or these directors and this writer. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like the film would have worked better if it had kind of been, like, um, the sequel trilogy with Star Wars in that... Like the main characters are the new generation, and yeah. and someone like Jack is more of like a supporting character, <laughs> and kind of maybe comes in like later in the story, like maybe like halfway through the story, he he enters the story, mm-hmm. um, and it could have been more firmly from like Henry and Karina's point of view, mm-hmm. and you could have reworked it a little bit, um, because again I think again Jack was never really built to be the main character, yeah, and it's but it's problem here because like the movie doesn't really have a main character. It's like a very no. unfocused, messy script. Um, yeah. Well, oh, and it's doing that lazy thing where it's like, um, that lazy thing. where, where basically like the new generation is just like every, everyone's kids. Everyone's kids. Um, which is like, would these people like actually be friends or like would they actually like? The only people who are important are people who are children of people who are already important. Yeah, they're like, would they necessarily, one, would they necessarily be following in their in their parents' footsteps? And two, would they be teaming up with this other person just because they <laughs> ha- know people who know people? Like, know yeah. each other? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I yeah. don't know. Um, so silly. Yeah, because Henry is obviously Will and Elizabeth's son. Karina, we later find out, is Barbosa's illegitimate daughter. Yeah. Speaking so of Barbosa. Speaking of Barbosa, so extra in this movie. So basically now <laughs> Barbosa has become like one of the most successful pirates on the sea. I love when he's doing his little tea time because he's got his nasty ass fingers. I said this in the other one. He's got his nasty ass fingers, but he's all posh with his little pinky yeah. up, eating like one cheese square at a time, like, yeah. drinking his tea. It is mm-hmm. so, I think that's so funny. Position, well, know. it's funny in this because he's not posh as in like the British Navy he doesn't have like those uh, vestments on, but he has like some other fancy getup. Um, he, they, I guess the backstory now is that he is like in control. He's like the most successful pirate now. He has like a fleet of like ten ships, yeah. so he is like raking in the dough. Like he has yeah. lots of money, yeah. lots of gold, lots of food, lots of. He has like a like a, a concerto playing, like a string quartet <laughs> playing in his in his like office. Um, and those guys are back from the, the two British soldiers. Yeah, the they two were British in the third soldiers. one, and they decided to become pirates. I guess, now they're yeah, back. they you know they were all gung ho about it in the other movie, and so yeah. I guess they've stayed. But they they um, hear about a, a Spaniard who they say well, Salamander. They do call him Salamander. That's why they come in. To, that's why they come in. <laughs> no, I know. I was going to say, I guess they are doing pretty well, you know, and they're pretty wealthy or whatever. And, like, you know, Barbos is allowing his men to also, you know, partake in that. But, like, I also noticed how the costumes are, like, so, like, I don't know, silly. They're not silly, but they're, like, they're a lot more colorful, so it makes them look like a silly, like silly pirates. It's like more cartoony. Yeah, it's more cartoony mm-hmm. than like they normally are, because they're more like rugged and like real life kind of like dirty and like grays and browns and stuff. But now there's like he's got like a, a green petticoat on, or like you know, like a red or pink something like. It's a lot more. Know. It's a lot more vibrant. Yeah, so mm. I don't know. That threw me off because it's like the mise en scène is more vibrant, but the color grade is very dull. So it's like a weird. Uh, I was like, "What the hell is distance. Willy Wonka doing in here?" <laughs> <laughs> Willy Wonka. Um, but anyway, so they tell him, and and Barbosa is like scared shitless, hearing about Salazar. Yeah. And Barbosa's scary. So if he's scared, yeah, that's a big deal. So he goes to see Sinead O'Connor for advice. Um, is that Sinead O'Connor? No, she's just a bald Ow. woman. No, I'm just being funny. I'm sorry. That wasn't that wasn't nice. She is As bald. we learned from Will Smith at the Oscars, don't make fun of a woman being bald. Well, if she's not choosing to be bald. 
I don't know. I think she's they just did this in this movie for. To be bald. So this is like a real witch. Karina's not a witch. She's just like no, interested yeah. in science and has like thoughts. Whereas this woman's supposedly like an actual witch yeah. of some kind. She's bald headed and she got these red lines all over her body. And she's basically like you know. Um, I guess the British government comes to her for advice. Or maybe something? I guess like, I don't know. That was weird. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But anyway, so so basically, she's like Salazar. Cause, oh, the reason why Barbos is scarce because Salazar took out one of like a couple of his chefs. So she's like, you need to go confront him or like go help him get Jack, and then he will leave you and your ship salon. I guess. So, yes, yes. So he's like, okay, I'll go. Um, so Jack's back in jail. He's gonna get executed. <laughs> What's new? And who's in jail? Who's but Uncle Jack. Played by Paul <laughs> Paul McCartney. That's right. Now I'm very annoyed by this because <laughs> Keith Richards cameo that worked because the whole thing is that Johnny Depp based his performance off of Keith Richards' kind of mannerisms, <laughs> right? So it was kind of like a tongue-in-cheek meta kind of nod to people who knew that sure, factoid. Sure. What besides both being British rock stars from the '60s? <laughs> And 70. What, what do they have in common? Why, why is Paul McCartney in this movie? He's trying to be in it. But you know what I thought was weird is how, like, they're dragging him out. Like, the two guards are dragging him out. And then, like, they stop for a really long time. So he can so talk to So that he McCartney. can talk to Paul McCartney. But it's like, <laughs> maybe stop a step and then, like... You know, and then you continue on, like, stop a step because they're, like, thrown off, but then continue on. But yeah. it's like, <laughs> they bring him over there to talk to him. <laughs> yeah. It's just so silly. Um, anyway, so they go, they're they're going to go kill him. Um, and they also have a whole gaggle of witches that are being sent to the gallows. They're doing, like, a big... Yeah. Big there's group. a truck of men, and then there's a truck of women. Yeah. But Jack isn't getting hanged. No, he's gonna he's getting get... beheaded because they just invented the guillotine. Ah! Um, so violent. Again, they show the heads in the basket. Um, yeah. and Jack says, "I wish I was hung," which again is another euphemism. Which I did not know, but yeah, being hung means you have a big penis. That's why. That's why you say he was hanged <laughs> when you talk about someone being executed by being hanged. <laughs> um, so again, just very like. I'm not trying to be a prude here. It's just weird. It feels like it's. It feels like excessive. I'm sorry. No, yeah, it's like every other line. It's crazy. Um, but then it was kind of funny because they were going back and forth. So I guess they're gonna be executed at the same time. But then Karina wants to have her last words. But then Jack is like, um, "Can you shut up?" <laughs> and yeah. she's like, "No, can you shut up?" And yeah, and then silliness ensues. Yeah, the silliness ensues. I think the pirates come back to make a to rescue Jack. Maybe I do not understand. No, I think Henry does something. I think Hen oh Henry doesn't. No, Henry, Henry pays them to help. Yes, 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 um, yes, yes. And one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen: the guillotine starts swinging. I so Jack is swinging around, and the I, blade keeps swinging back and forth, almost chopping his neck off. Like I did not understand that at all. That doesn't make any sense. First of all. And second of all, that it's, is just so silly. It's it's Pirates of the Caribbean. It's so silly. That's like the silliest thing. That's even more silly than him jumping off the cliff in the other movie. Mm-hmm. And then supposedly living. Yeah. Um, like <laughs> this this whole this whole scene is just ridiculous. Again, this is where we have what we talked about before. Henry like grabbing her ass and just like this whole thing. <laughs> They're trying to create this kind of like like. Uh, Kind of what we saw in the last film, I had mentioned that uh, Jack's uh, back and forth with Penelope Cruz's character kind of felt like those 30s, like, screwball comedies, yes, kind of, yes. like, like love-hate relationship. They're kind of trying to do another, they're trying to do that again, they but... They don't even know each other. That's what, they barely know each other, <laughs> whereas Giant Depp and Penelope Cruz, like, are, are better actors than these two, well, these yeah. two nobodies, frankly, well, let's be honest. they also history, too. So That's also like... true, exactly. So... Yeah, there's later parts in the there's there's later times in the film where again they yeah, they have like this banter like this kind of like flirtatious like uh, bickering and it's like they don't seem like they like each other at all exactly they have until zero they chemistry until they kiss at the end. zero it's like hey you know what we're both conventionally attractive <laughs> let's make out um but um I wrote down here every character is so thin on on a writing level 
So I guess physically too, some of them are quite thin. Um, but but I just mean every character like like no one feels like they have like a compelling. Um, not even arc, just basic characterization, right? Yeah. Because like an arc is great, but at least if you have like characters that are well defined, like okay, I can maybe forgive that. But no one feels well defined. Henry is like is basically like a piece of toast. <laughs> Karina's whole thing is just like. Women have been like oh. science too. Oh my god, she's so annoying, which is so irritating because like she can be such a cool character, but like, uh, her whole her whole shtick her is only that character. she's a snit. She's like a little snit. No wonder people don't like you. It's not because you're smart. It's because you're being a snit. Yeah. Um. Again, Salazar. I think honestly, the the most they do is Salazar. The yeah. most fleshy out because they poor Gibbs because he's always brought back in. But then, like, he's never Gibbs given... Gibbs is... This is the most useless he's, he's been. He's never given any more yeah. material. Because in the fourth movie, he plays the role of, like, knowing the map and everything in his head. Yeah. And stuff. This movie, he has nothing to do. He really has no role Also, where's... Where's... Pin, pin, what is his name? Pinto in in Marguerite. Marguerite. Well, they haven't been here since the third movie. That's true, I guess. I don't know. It's just because, like, Gibbs and the monkey and Marguerite and Pinto, they're, like... It's mm-hmm. like fan service. They just, like, keep coming back because they're, like, fan favorites. Well, so, what else are those actors doing? If you if you go on uh, the actor who plays Gibbs, if you go on his like letterbox profile, yeah, and by profile I mean like his actor page, not like he doesn't have an account. No, <laughs> um, his filmography. Yeah, his film. Thank you, his filmography. And in in letterbox just automatically ranks them by popularity, like how many people have seen them. Mm. His first five movies are these five. Like he hasn't really been in many other uh, big things, so I think it's fine. just like what, not not that uh, Rigetti and Pint, like they but but just I don't know it's just uh, <laughs> um, no it just seems weird that that Gibbs and the monkey would be the I don't know yeah it's just weird um, and also the two British dudes who were just like literally throwaway characters from the first movie and they have a, <laughs> they were in the first movie the third movie now they're back for the yeah third. now they all of a sudden they're like part of the crew. <laughs> I don't know. Where's Cotton? I think they wanted to have more people come back, but they couldn't due to scheduling conflicts. I believe, uh, actually. Um, yeah. um sure reschedule. But anyway, Barbo- Salazar and Barbosa meet up, and Barbosa's like, I will help you find Jack, or whatever. Which I don't know how he knows how to find Jack, frankly. Uh, but he's pretty predictable. <laughs> that is true. And then Salazar tells his whole story, and that's where you get the flashback and everything, yeah, and the yeah. horrible deep fake and all this stuff. Um, and also we get the origin of why, like it explains everything. It feels like the opening of Indiana Jones three, <laughs> where we find out like, uh, in this, we find out why he's Jack Sparrow. Jack yeah. the Sparrow. Yeah. <laughs> we also find out where he gets his very specific captain's hat. Yes. Um, which I think there's like a really blame way of why his name is Sparrow. Because it's like, he's like, he looked like a sparrow. I'm like. No, he didn't. He was just standing up on the crow's nest. No, yeah, nose. Like, he was like in it was the very, little, it was the very nest forced. Thing or whatever. Um, it, again, it's just like Jack is best when he's a mystery, and I feel like yeah. these these five movies have flushed him out in terms of like details about his background. Mm-hmm. It, they've they've done way too much, I think. Mm-hmm. They've they've done a lot of overkill. Um, lots like I wrote here. We've started to see this before. Lots of sex jokes. Um, more than all the other films combined. Because this isn't like this, they haven't had these before. It's, it's, I guess it's fine, but it's like too much. It's like, it, yeah. it loses the, it, not the nuance, but it's just like, I don't know, it just becomes laborious after a while. It's yeah. just like, okay, okay, what are you, a third, a third grader? Like, okay, we get it. It did feel a little juvenile in that. <laughs> Which, I mean, if he wrote Rush Hour 2 and 3, the, those are not very sophisticated movies I like the first rush hour and the second one's okay yeah and the third one is bad I just don't like it <laughs> the third one is weird um but so so he tells this whole sob story so his father was killed by pirates and his grandfather was killed by pirates did so, he say that? yeah he was like I hate pirates because my fam- my father oh. and grandfather were killed by pirates so and then yeah and then he goes on and kills them yes we already covered that yeah exactly yeah I guess he was so doing- he was doing a lot, and he was all famous for it, but then, you know, Jack thwarted him. Yeah, and I guess that's why Jack and Barbosa are so afraid of him, because he's like a famous pirate hunter kind of guy, I guess. I um, guess, but... Which, I guess it's cool that our villain is not a pirate, <laughs> for once. Like, usually, what do you like... you mean? Yes, he... The British government? No, Salazar. Norrington? But there's always still a pirate villain. 
This is the only one without a pirate villain, right? What are you talking about? No, in the first one, it's it's like the British. Barbosa is also a villain. Barbosa is not in the first one. Bar- is it? He's the main villain oh, in the wait. first oh, movie. Oh, wait. Oh, shoot. Yes. What yes. the fuck are you smoking No, here? no, no. I just, I'm thinking of him as a separate character now, not as part of Jack's situation. Okay. Yes. Never mind. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Okay. Um, are you okay? You need a breather? Uh, <laughs> you kind of look like you short-circuited for a second. <laughs> are you all right? You need to take a break? <laughs> no, it's fine. I, I was just... He's just been doing his own thing. He's changed so much since that first movie. I don't believe that. I for. I forget that. Yeah, that he's he's a bad guy because it's yeah. Anyways, never mind. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> so I'm saying this is it's kind of strange to have like there's no pirate villain in this movie. Yes. Basically, I mean he's basically functioning like a pirate. Yeah, even though he's kind of a pirate. Yeah. Um, but he's not stealing anything. Was he government? No, he worked for the Spanish government. Oh, okay, yeah, like okay. part of the Spanish Navy or whatever. But uh, so they find Jack. They send out undead zombie sharks. Which yeah, is actually kind of cool. That was actually crazy. I was like, "What the fuck are they doing?" And then they and then they came to life. So they try. So they're, they're heading off to land because they know that Salazar and his team can't go on land, or whatever. And this is when we have the VFX of them of of That's Salazar right. and his team. I don't know what I'm saying team. His crew <laughs> running on the water is fucking hilarious because of Javier Bardem's like crackhead look. It was just that one it, shot. It's I don't fu- know why he did that. It's just so fucking funny. <laughs> um, so they get onto the onto the shore, but then they get attacked. And this is when the franchise jumps the shark. This is Jack when- wakes up. Everything else I thought was jumping the shark. This is this is the moment where I was like, this is not like this is just wrong. <laughs> Jack wakes up, and there's a random guy. And they're in the skeleton of a whale. <laughs> and the guy is like, you owe me money, so you have to marry my sister. Which what? How does that? His like, his overweight, like, like this, she's made to be like this oh, disgusting so woman. Crusty. He's like, I have scurvy. Or what was he say? I have sc- scabies. Scabies. And, and she's like, like, so do I. It's okay, so do I. <laughs> and and it's just like, some chapstick. You, may, you may kiss the, it's like this weird, and I'm just like, what? I feel like we're in the Twilight Zone. Like, it, it just is so bizarre. <laughs> and there's um, a priest there? But what? <laughs> with, like, painted on eyebrows. It's just so strange. Were his eyebrows painted on? Or, like, drawn on. There was something weird. Or maybe it's, but something was weird about his facial hair. Uh, I was just trying to understand. Was this, like, a little comedy? Like, where the hell did these people come That's from? That's what I'm saying. It, you know what it feels like, frankly? <laughs> it feels like something out of a David Lynch movie. Where it's just like this random <laughs> set of details, and it's just like you're like not meant to understand it at face value. Um, oh, so but silly. Anyway, Barbosa comes and kind of rescues you them, and yeah, um, and they're like, they, we need a ship, but Jack has the pearl still in the bottle. So that's another thing. So he has the black pearl in the bottle still from the last movie, but he hasn't been able to get it out because he doesn't know how to get it out. Oh yeah, because they had that rickety ship in the beginning. I don't know what happened to it. <laughs> Forgo- yeah. I forgot. Well, they basically abandoned ship and go onto this island. So oh, yes, right. yes, yes. Um, But it wasn't the pearl. And now I guess he's still... All, has- all he has to do is break the glass, apparently. Yeah, what? <laughs> so, and again, I was like, this wasn't the whole thing at the end of the last one. They take like 30 of them. Yeah, so why didn't you try out, thing. why didn't you try out different ways? Like throw one on the ground. See what happens. See if, you know what I mean? Like maybe he, like experiment with all the other ships you don't give a shit about. Maybe he did it on purpose. Like he didn't want someone to take it. No. I don't know. Absolutely not. I don't know. It um, was really weird. Again. Anyways, uh, that was pretty funny. Because it, it turned it. We, it like didn't grow all the way because <laughs> it was like oh shit like the boat's growing now but he, and he dropped it before he got to the water and then it turned into a little toy boat and then Barbosa was like ah it needs the sea so he tossed it out there but then it sank <laughs> but then it popped up again as a real ship so whatever <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny it was pretty funny I I, I he heed and ha ha I wanted it to not come up <laughs> it's like okay <laughs> That's it. Um, like it's like when, when they're asking for both set, they're like, "Okay, what's next?" It's like nothing. <laughs> that's that, it. That's, that's it. it. <laughs> um, so now they're off to go find Poseidon's train. So that's the whole thing. Is Karina has these coordinates from this diary she found from her father yes. that she never knew. 
Um, and it gets these coordinates like from the stars, basically. And she's mm. gonna she's leading them there. But then after having a long conversation with her, Barbosa realizes this I'm this bitch's father. I loved her mama. Her mama died, and the movie does not earn this. But the movie's trying to do a little bit of character work with Barbosa. She died, and then he took her to no. the orphanage. What? I know that. I, I wasn't done saying what I was going to say. Oh. Say that. Okay, thank you. Um, it, it, They're trying to do this character work of Barbosa kind of feeling, like, inadequate. Like, like he's, like, like um, you know, like, so when Jack realizes that, that she's his daughter, she, mm-hmm. she's Barbosa's daughter, you know. Like, Barbosa's very quick to be, like, you know, like, she wouldn't, she would never. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like, I did the best I could. Like, I did the only thing a blackguard like me could do. I brought her to the orphanage or whatever. It's like the so same thing with Davy. He feels like he's not good enough for her. Yeah. Right? So I'm like, you know what? Okay, I'll, Jeffrey Rush is a good actor. I'll, I'll give him a pass. I'll give him a pass on this. <laughs> um, but uh, then yada, yada, yada. Salazar's ship catches up. There's a big fight. <laughs> even the even Salazar's ship's figurehead. The front, like figurine oh person my gosh. hates Jack and is it fighting. It comes out, yeah, and it tries to kill him. That but, was um, crazy. His, I, the ship, I forgot what the ship is called, but Salazar's ship is like this giant centipede ship. Like the something devil, right? Crazy. Or no? I don't remember what it I was. I have no yeah. idea. It was a weird kind of ship. That was crazy. It was um, like Monster House. It was like Monster Boat. Monster Boat! <laughs> yeah. Um... So, yeah, 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 they fight some more, and I forget what happens, and they show up to the shiny island. They get to the coordinates. Oh, yes. Um, and I will oh, say, there's actually a pretty nice all visual. The gems. It's actually kind of pretty. Um, and I guess, I guess Karina had this ruby that also came from her father, who she doesn't know. No, 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 it was on the book. It was on the It was on the book, excuse me. But then she took it off for whatever. And I guess she has to put the ruby in the broken ruby, and then it unleashes the... Basically, they, they pull a yes. Moses, and they part the, right, the, the sea. Yeah. Um, well, also, um, why is this trident just hanging out? It works beside on it. the floor. <laughs> Where is he? You would think he would have it. So is Poseidon real? If Davy Jones is real, I feel like Poseidon should have been real. If Davy Jones's locker is real, I feel like Poseidon should have. Is Calypso a Greek thing? No, I don't think so. Calypso is is a Caribbean thing. Right? Oh, yeah, Calypso Greek mythology. Oh, really? Calypso is a nymph of the mythical island of Ogia? Ogia? Hmm. I think you're just thinking of, like, the music genre. <laughs> Calypso. Wait, well, that's, that's right. Never mind. Um, but in any case, so they part the, the sea, and they're able to go down to the ocean floor. And it is it's kind of a cool, cool visual. I was going to say, it is a pretty cool visual where it's, like, you know, like, the water is still there, right? So it's, like, you could walk into the sea if you yeah. wanted to. Um, the little fishies. So, um, oh, I at some point, Salazar gets Henry. And Salazar's like, I need to go on land to go kill Jack. or get the trident. So oh, he's like, I'll possess he's, Henry. Yeah, he's like, oh, I'm, I'm a yeah. possessed. So since when can he possess people? They just like, it would have been nice if they had, what, if they had like brought that up before. Why didn't they just do that with the first ship that came in? Remember in the very wait. Why didn't he just possess Henry in the first in the first five minutes? Yeah, or like whenever. Yeah, what, that was the first ship that went in. Or no, the ship. I'm just saying the very beginning of the movie. He no, loses no, Henry no. a lot. No, I know, I know. But the ship that was being chased by Henry's ship went into the Devil's Triangle beforehand. Yes. yes. Why didn't they? Instead of they just destroyed them. Why didn't he? Possess them. I don't think they destroyed anyone in the Devil's Triangle. I think the Devil's Triangle destroyed them. Well, they were just chilling. <laughs> they just watched it so. happen. Well, maybe not. I, I don't really know. This well, is a good they, question. Your point's well taken. Then they could have gotten out of the cave a lot sooner. That's um, all I'm saying. So, but yeah, I, I, it would have been better if they had maybe introduced that he could do that earlier, like set it up so that when he does it, it's not like, like this literally feels just like the writers that like, they were writing the script and they were like, shit, how do we... Get him on land. <laughs> what if he could possess people? That'd be kind of cool, right? Well, because our theory was correct of of they just turn into dust when they get to land. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they fight. Henry's possessed. They fight some more. But Jack, Jack is struggling because he's like, oh, I don't want to hurt Will's son, but also Will's son is 
trying to kill me. Salazar. But then I guess Henry breaks free of the possession and he breaks the trident. Which which breaks their curse yeah. as well. So now so now Salazar can be now here. They're human. But also, because they're in the water, but now they're human, they need to come out of the water because, like, they're going to Oh, yes, his men were... His men were... Kind of hanging out on the sidelines. In the water, like, walls, because they couldn't get on land, which is kind of weird, because they were still on land. There was just no water, but also, wouldn't there be water in the sand? This is where the logic fails, because, because technically, the earth is covered in all land. But then some of that land is covered in water. So technically, yeah, if you walk on the sea floor, that's land. Well, I would think even, I mean, as long as it's not like dried out and it's just temporary, that like the I don't you think could walk on the sea floor. I, you know what? You know what I think? I don't think it matters. I don't know. Anyways, trident gets broken, and they they try to make their escape up the. They turn anchor. into humans. Oh well, no, and they're like, okay, well, shit. Mom. How do we get out of here? And then Barbosi, he comes and he's going to save the day. And he's got the anchor. And Gibbs is like driving the pearl on like the very edge of the, of the wall. And that part's kind of cool, yeah. And, and and so he's like, get on, you know. And then, you know, they all get on. But uh-oh, Salazar also gets onto the anchor. Yeah, and this is where Karina finds out And then that Barbosa is her father. Yes, so he has this tattoo of the, stars, of the yeah. star coordinate, the which, I, which yeah. I guess is also called Karina, and that's where she got her name. And it's also branded on the on the cover of the diary. Mm. So she's like, hey, she shit. says, she says, "Who am I to you?" And he says, "Treasure," which is kind of sweet. They do not earn it at all. I thought that was so weird. <laughs> well, because he's like saying, like, "You're you're more important to me than than all the treasure in the world." Didn't he say? Um, we'll get to Salazar, wasn't he? Like, you'll get your sparrow and I'll get my treasure or something like that. I think so. I think so. so. Okay, that's why he said it? Okay. Cause Maybe not. No, I don't think he knew she existed. No, no, no. No, no. I think he's been no, his treasure. No. He means his treasure because Salazar I keeps going up. No. Oh, then why'd you just ask that if you knew? I'm saying is that's why they tied that back in. Because if they, he had not said that previously, then it would just be kind of weird that he said that. Maybe. Well, I, th- I don't think it's a necessarily a callback to that original line. I just saw it as like, that's been his, every single movie he's been in, he just wants treasure, treasure, Ooh. treasure, treasure. So I, I guess, thought it was just, I think it was just reflecting a character arc of his, of like redefining what treasure means to him. Oh, I didn't I think it so. had to be a callback. But I guess I guess that's probably what it was because I don't I don't really have any faith in the writing of this well, I movie. I just thought it was weird. He just said treasure, and then anyways, so he sacrifices himself to 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 get Salazar get off Salazar of. off of the anchor, and you would say, well, why don't they just swim to the top? Well, no, they're like hundreds of feet down at the literal bottom of the ocean, and also the pressure when the water comes back in, so. You know, they were human for two seconds, and then they died. <clears throat> so, that yeah. sucks. And Barbosa finally fucking did. Well, I mean, not finally, because he died once, and then he was brought back. <laughs> and I guess Jack, at the end, is like, he's like, oh, we're going to go beyond the horizon. The implication being he's going to go rescue Barbosa from, from David Jones' These never die! Um, it's also hilarious later, so... Yay, we solved the problem, I guess. I don't really understand what the point of this movie was. But anyway, yay, no, we did no. it. So that so that Will can get off the boat. What do you mean? I, but that's Henry's goal. Oh. But he's not the main character. No one's the main character. Yeah. Um. Anyway, it's hilarious because Karina's like, Barbosa. My name is Barbosa. <laughs> and it reminded me of Rey in The Rise of Skywalker, when she's <laughs> like, Rey Skywalker. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yes, Will, he can finally come on land. Yeah. He already came on land once. Ew. But man, that was not the grossest thing we've seen on this show. Come on. You don't have to be like Jeff. Anyway, the... <laughs> anyway, this moment should feel more cathartic, but it isn't because a I haven't seen well in two movies. In two, this movie sucks. So I I feel nothing. Well, I'm sorry. Good for Kieran Knightley. She was on she had one day of filming complete green she, screen again she like, got yeah. to just run across and be happy and then make out with orlando bloom so that was all of her character in the movie 
Yeah. Basically. <laughs> so I guess the movie kind of resolves all of the franchise's loose ends. Does it, though? Yeah, it resolves Will's problem. Jack has the pearl back. And, you know, I guess it like nothing's left unresolved, I guess. Though the post credit scene does imply that Davy Jones is now back from the dead because I guess... How did he come back? Which I don't know what that... Because I, I, I read online it has to do with the breaking of the trident. But what is uh, that? Yes. His death was not a curse. So why would killing the trident break the curse of him being dead? Yeah, so, if anything... Nothing to do with it. If anything, he would be in the locker or like limbo or whatever, right? But he would be a human instead of a, a squiggly man. But he's still a squiggly man. I don't know. So, and that's the end of the movie. Um, overall, it my, here's my thing with this movie, is that it's not consistently one thing. Sometimes it's mediocre. Sometimes it's okay. Sometimes it's actively bad. <laughs> so, so that's kind of my my kind of overall take on the on the movie. It's very forgettable. This was really a slog to try to remember what happens in this movie yeah. we spent 30 minutes talking about not like, the movie racism, yeah, like <laughs> racism in media and, like it'd be one thing if, if the movie had racism in it and we could like extrapolate that and have a conversation yeah. this movie had nothing to do with has i don't I, at least from to my mind like there's not there, there's no specific problem that well the whole the whole bit of of british even being there oh uh, the british kind of rude sorry harvey yeah, Harvey, my DP and colorist for my film, was he was British. So was he still is? Oh, he's he's still British. <laughs> well, he lives in Canada now, so I don't know if. <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, do you want to hear some trivia? Sure. Okay, I swear, God, if you look at it, before, I didn't. I didn't. Do you promise? Do you bingy promise? What? Why do I have to be? Just read it. Oh, oh, that sounds like. Well, you just put your cursor in the trivia. No, I just, I just cool roll. Book. I just rolled up. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, she refuses to do a pinky promise. I think that tells oh us everything. Oh my god, you need to know. just read it. The severed heads in the guillotine basket are of directors Joaquin Roning and Espen Sandberg. Oh. <laughs> Which is, I'm sure, how they felt after this movie opened and got horrible reviews. <laughs> this movie was being produced as Johnny Depp was going through a bitter divorce. He was chronically late to set, to the point where it ate into the schedule as the set often came to a halt for several hours at a time. It got to the point where a production assistant was hired just to wait outside Depp's house and announce that he was awake when they saw the lights inside come on. Uh, what? In several countries, this movie was released as Pirates of the Caribbean, colon, Salazar's Revenge. Hey. Interesting. That's, that's better. Um, that makes it makes a little bit more, more sense, sense, I guess. <laughs> In the flashback scene, Jack Sparrow is seen on a ship called the Wicked Wench. This is actually the Black Pearl. What? It gets, it gets, because remember we talked about in World's End that it was a ship that sank. Oh yes. And yes. in a, it gets renamed when Davy Jones brings it back from the depths after it's set ablaze. So in the, um, um as this happened in the book Pirates of the Caribbean, quote the Price of Freedom, making that book canon. There were books. I told, we talked about this. There was books. I read, I read one of them. Oh, but afterwards, right afterwards. Yeah, it's not based on books. Like, like tie-in okay, okay. books for okay, the movies. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, Brenton Thwaites, that's a very British name, who <laughs> plays Henry Turner, is only 12 years younger than Orlando Bloom oh. and only four years younger than Keira Knightley, who oh. plays his parents in the movie. Because, of course, Keira Knightley, as we brought up, is very, was very young when they filmed the first movie. <laughs> um, due to an injury that severed the tip of, dip, of Depp's right middle finger during oh. filming and its bandaging, CGI was used to generate a finger and hide the bandage. <laughs> The cause of injury was up for debate in court during the hearings of Depp's defamation suit against his former wife, Amber Heard. He lost the tip of his finger. I guess so. Oh, my God. Kit Harrington was the first choice to play um, Henry Turner. However, due to his commitments with Game of Thrones, he was unavailable. Mm. You know who Kit Harrington is? Yes, of course. Jon Snow. Yes, he's so sickly. The, 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 what? Orlando Bloom. Well, you know what? He kind of fits with Orlando Bloom. They kind of have a similar vibe. I, I guess like. so. He would have been a good son he, of... Would he look more like him than this guy? I feel like Waith, or Thwaites. Th Brendan Th Brenton Thwaites. Yeah, Thwaites looks pretty like him. Yeah, I think they, they did a good job of just being like a generic British guy. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, that's me. Come on. Okay, no. Henry, that I, Brent, I'm sorry. Brenton Thwaites was not hired because of his acting chops. He's just like a generic looking, conventionally attractive British guy. You think Orlando is just a 
average looking conventionally not average in terms of him not being attractive but he's like he's not very distinctive he's just like he just looks like very bland oh i guess so Anyway, but I'm also not into men, so I don't really have a good frame of reference. Sorry. Well, you could just approach Anyway, me. this is hilarious, okay? Okay, sure. During filming, Johnny Depp and his then-wife Amber Heard breached Australia's strict biosecurity laws Ooh. when they failed to declare their two dogs to the Australian Customs Service when they flew by private jet into Queensland where filming was taking place. Amber Heard was charged with two counts of illegally importing the dogs into the country and one count of producing a false document. In April 2016, Heard appeared in the Southport Magistrate's Court and pled guilty to falsifying quarantine documents, stating that she was sleep deprived and made a mistake. The two biosecurity charges were dropped, were, excuse me, were dropped, and she was placed on a one month good behavior bond, paying a $1,000 fine for producing a false document. Heard and Depp also released a video in which they apologized for their behavior and urged people to adhere to the biosecurity laws. Australian newspaper The Guardian called the case the, quote, highest profile criminal quarantine case in Australian history. <laughs> How silly. <laughs> now, so even famous people have problems. <laughs> it took three hours every day to apply Javier Bardem's makeup. Wow. Um, I think most of it was makeup, but the hair was CGI, obviously. No, of course. The actor likened the experience to having cold chicken breasts attached to his face. <laughs> the film was I guess silicone would yeah um uh, and then lastly Captain Sa this, again this is one of those trivias that the trivia itself isn't funny it's just like the way it was written because again this is all user generated okay Captain Salazar states that it was he who gave Jack uh, Captain Jack the name Sparrow but if that were true how did everyone else including Captain Jack find out while Salazar was trapped in the triangle oh shit <laughs> You know? Well, he did leave one man alive. So who No, but he but no, but but he came up with the name and then he got drowned. So he didn't have a time no, to tell anyone. No, I know, but then they came back as little burnt zombie men. So uh, whoever whoever floated into the triangle next, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, okay. I don't know. So in terms of critical reception, again, like we've said, all these movies go downhill. Uh, in terms of the, at least in terms of the critical reception, it has a thirty percent on Rotten Tomatoes, mm -hmm. Rotten Tomatoes, if you will. <laughs> and here's the critics' consensus quote: "Pirates of the Caribbean: Dead Men Tell No Tales" proves that neither a change in directors nor an undead Javier Bardem is enough to drain the sinking franchise's murky bilge. <laughs> Very creative there. And it's a pretty good assessment, <laughs> frankly. Sure. Um, I think they 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 got complaints about the last one and they tried to make a change, mm -hmm. and the change was even worse, frankly. Um, it always sucks. Yeah. Um, in terms of contemporary reception on Letterboxd, has a 2.6 out of 5. So, again, kind of like mediocre, not great. Wait, did you say, you said the Rotten Tomatoes one, right? Yeah, 30%. Okay. I heard you. you okay, you've been very, you've been very distracted this episode. No, I, I say I, something I, and then five seconds later you're like, wait, are you going to say that part? I'm like, no, I did. No, no, because I, no, because I, I heard you say the quote. But I didn't hear you say it's 30%. Anyways, whatever. Okay. So, <laughs> Viviana, favorite part? The sharks. Oh, very good. We're very quick. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking about it during the movie. I was like, oh, this, yeah. is, pretty, this is pretty cool. Um, I think I'm going to say the deep fake. Because it's hilarious. <laughs> it's just hilarious. No, if I was serious, I would say as, as unearned... And half-assed as it is, I maybe would go with Barbosa's relationship with Karina, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like, like there's that whole idea for a subplot. I, mm -hmm. I like, on paper. Mm -hmm. Not sure if they do it well, but... I it, do like Javier. Uh, Although his, his... Well, you said the sharks. You can't tell me what my favorite part should be. I'm not. I'm adding on. You, I said favorite part singular. You can't have two. Oh. Which is it? Shark or... Shark or Javier? I was gonna say I like Javier. He's I think he's pretty scary, but also I can't take him super seriously because his hair does not adhere to gravity. Anyways, so you like their relationship? I think that's a forced relationship. I think that's kind of weird, but whatever. Well, that's the thing is I think it's it's this isn't not their this chemistry, isn't... but just the story in general. I think it's... Karina and Barbosa. Or, Barbosa having a Karina. Yeah. Um, well, here's the thing: is that this is the section of the show where we pick our favorite part. That does not—it's not the part of the show where we pick a part that is objectively good. 
right? And no. with a movie like this, I'm splitting hairs, <laughs> right? Where it's like, what what out of everything compared to everything else is like my favorite part? No, no, I know. I was just, I was saying, I was asking. Yeah. So you, no, I'm, you liked, you no, know, I, liked their, their relationship? No, I know. I'm just, I'm just saying, I think it speaks to how bad the movie is. No, I know. I'm, I'm asking you. Question. No, not really. I didn't really like it. I'm saying it's just out of everything oh, else. Like, oh. it's like the best. But you think that's an interesting idea? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I think it just speaks to I, the I, fact I that. I know what you're saying. I'm just... What? To elaborate. To elaborate. I'm elaborating right now and you keep interrupting oh, okay. me. Okay, excuse me. So shut the fuck up and let me elaborate. Okay. I'm saying I think it speaks to the fact that my favorite part is something that's not really good. None of it's good. That's what I'm saying. That's my point. Is that it's just like none of it's good. I know, but so you, so you like that idea? What you, you on paper, sure. You wouldn't just because it's something. Because it's something. You wouldn't want like it to be like Jack's daughter. Or anything, no. Or no. Like something. You know? No. Okay. Absolutely not. No. Just I think it's it's it, it's just something. It's just something to stick my teeth into. Yeah. It's the only thing in the movie that's like I think interesting mm-hmm. to me on a writing level mm-hmm. personally. Um. Like if I would, if if someone showed me this script and was like, "What should we like? How should we revise it?" Mm-hmm. That'd be something I'd be like, "That there's there's something interesting there. Yeah, explore it. More, yeah, explore it. Maybe develop it a little They're bit." They're not more. together for very long. That's the thing is they just the movie isn't built for that. That yeah. feels very like forced to give like the movie like an emotional ending. Mm-hmm. Then they realized, wow, like we have no character arcs or compelling relationships <laughs> in this movie, so we gotta like add something. Yeah, I don't know. I thought it was a little weird, but whatever. Okay, Viviana. One out of ten. What are you giving this movie? Do you need a refresher on what you've given the other movies? Sure. Okay. So you gave, at World's End, that's the third one, a five. Mm -hmm. You then gave the fourth and second films a six. Mm -hmm. And then the first film an eight. So would you say this is better or worse than at World's End? Well, what, what would you give it one out of ten? Um, I was thinking of five, and I would put it above world at world's end. You like this one more than at world's end, really? Yeah, remember it was so confusing. All right. It was so hard to follow. Like it, there was no story. It was just like a like. That's crazy. That's that's amazing. <laughs> but I did not. I did that's not expect the one, that. The adventure, right? When they go in the. Well, they're all adventures. What do you mean? Oh, sorry, I didn't understand what you meant by adventure. But please tell me. I mean the adventure (laughs) to the other side. Oh, yeah. Oh, of course. How could I have not known that's what you meant by adventure? (laughs) Um, I'm just surprised. I think this movie is... I I think I'm going to give it a five as well. Mm -hmm. But barely. I am being generous. I didn't think it was that bad. I just thought it was... I think some parts of this movie are horrible. It's just like so ridiculous. It's just and like okay, like <laughs> it's just so. I felt nothing. <laughs> well, that's that's like that's my thing. It's just like it. It just I don't feel. I just don't feel anything. Yeah. It, it, and it and it's just confusing and bland and empty and some parts are just truly baffling. But I'm gonna give it a five because again, like it's like some parts are okay, some parts are bad, and then some things are mediocre. So I think it all averages out to like a five. Mm-hmm. You know. So that automatically would put that at the bottom for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it, I did rank them, like basically, like the first one's the best. <laughs> in it. But I, but um, I thought the last one was okay. It wasn't actually as bad as I thought it was gonna be. And this one wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. This one just felt lazy more than anything. Yeah, um, I'd prefer this one over the last one. <laughs> wait. No, you don't, because you gave. You oh gave wait, the last I mean, one I as, mean the third one. Excuse me. At, yeah. At, at World's End. Yeah. So again, I'm very surprised because with that, well, you know what? We're going to save this for the next episode. <laughs> Talk about the whole franchise in uh, in, in in conversation with itself, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and this will be our third franchise that we've completed now. Yeah. I got to say, one of my favorite episodes is, is when we do the retrospective because it's shorter. I don't have to worry about writing notes for the movie, um, <laughs> like, seem, like, like for the plot. But we can kind of just, like, take a step back and look at everything. Um... So, but in terms of this episode, that's it for this week's episode. Uh, Now, that's what I call a franchise. Next week, like I said, we'll be taking a look back on the entire Pirates of the Caribbean franchise 
and try to make sense of it all. <laughs> Viviana, where can they find us? <laughs> you guys can find us wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Franchise Podcast. We know you have many podcasting options, and we thank you for choosing us. Peace out, guys. Later, Gators.